I love that joke so much. All right. Let's see. <clears throat> test, test. One, two, right. three. Test, test. test, test. Hello. Test, test. I see you got 21 followers. How long does it take for you? Does it take like 68, 60? You got to hit 50 followers, I think. Yeah, 50 followers. And um, actually, Terry, let me tab things. into your stream. So that way you get like the, a the average viewers, honestly, is the hardest part. I'm already there. You already got the average? Yeah, because I only do these and you guys watch the whole time, so. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Achievements, path to and then, um, I have we 20 also... out of 50 followers. I have 25.13 out of 8 hours streamed, 7 out of 7 different days, and 3.85 out of 3 follow, uh, viewers. So what I about the chat? Uh, it doesn't say anything about chat, so. I think the chat's just an achievement. You don't need chat to talk to you to be an affiliate. Just have your chat turned off the entire time. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I don't like those 30 people. 30 more followers, and I'll get affiliate as well. Nice. Damn, y'all make me pay $10 a month? Then I can't play the music I like anymore. <laughs> just do just do NCM. Whoa. NCM will die. You're tripping me That's the fuck it. out, Jaden. I don't like that. <laughs> oh, fuck, man. That's not good. No, don't Stream. look at that camera, you son Stream of a bitch. <laughs> Yo, I'm not going to lie, Jay. When you were waving, I thought it, I thought it was Trin waving. I, I was about to freak the fuck out. <laughs> I don't like Stop it. That Stop it. <laughs> all right, everybody. That's all I'm gonna say. Let's tone the chaos down just a little bit here and get get into the <laughs> into the mood. Welcome back, everybody. Missed you all. Hope you had a good week between here and last session. Oh yeah. Put mm. the stream invite out for everybody if you want to come say yeah, hi. Yeah. What are you doing? When I'm gone. Wait for you to come home. <laughs> I work seven, uh, five days a week, but when I'm not working... I'll never have as many stars as you. Uh, I just did this for now. If we want to change it later, we can, but this is what I picked for your summon celestial. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it just says summon celestial. Yep. Yeah. His name. That, I don't know why that gives me such Christina Applegate or uh, Applebee's vibes. Just... It's just a set of words that pops up. It's not even like a being. That happens with some tokens, so. That's okay. Uh, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll find one. Anyway, Whitworth. Yes. I think you're last. I am last. Tell us what we did last week. All right. Well, seeing as how I just got done working for a bunch of time, let me, let me really. Okay, last we left off, Dave Matthews' hand made our way from the grave where we did a bit of looting, a bit of uh, giant hacking, and dragon hack or uh, dragon hacking, not giant hacking. We got some scales from Venom Fang, and we looted um, the Venom Fang's lair. And then after that, we headed to, tri uh, not Tribor, frickin' uh, Yartar. And while getting back to Yartar, we received news of a few different things that the Water Baron has put a wanted poster out for us. And he was very interested in, in, in meeting with us, which was kind of a, a thing, because the last time we left Yartar, it was a she. So after we had learned this new information we just decided to split into teams to half defuse our wanted status and maybe uh solve some things more diplomatically and the other half went to solve things uh maybe a little bit more systematically with uh the zentarum and a little bit more with the mobsters uh unfortunately it seems that our mobsters had comprised of tacitus and astral had made their way into the city first and had learned that the Zentarum was also, uh, as I'm, I'm led to believe they, they were under new, new management as well, weren't they? Oh yes. Yes. So, yeah. so Astral rolling up to new management with Tacitus, um, proved to be a, a little bit of an altercation where there were some disagreements said and, uh, people, were offended that being astral and the new 
uh, leader of the Zentarum in Yartar, which is, uh, what was his name? I'm sorry, it's just, we only ca caught it a few times. Uh, one more time? Who what was, was the name, the name of the new Zentarum? Oh, uh, Reed. Reed poured a glass of red wine on Astral's head, which kind of ensued a small combat leading to Astral, um, being unconscious and Tacitus making a deal to trade the giant slaying axe, which he vowed to return for, for, what is it, safe passage? It was, what was the full deal? It was safe passage and... To forgive them. <laughs> yeah, basically, basically safe passage. <laughs> That's it. So as they made their way out, oh, it was safe passage for them and for us, who we just learned while Jaden and, or so apologies, while Ollivander and um, Derek made their way, so made their way into town to try and diplomatically solve things, were arrested on site and put in the secret orders of execution, which they were completely unaware of. All of us were. So Tacitus giving up the great axe got all of us safely out of Yartar to quickly reconvene on the airship traveling north towards Miabar, I think is what we last last left off, correct? That's where we're heading as a group. Mm -hmm. The uh, stone we giants hit is hit where we last. Oh, yeah. We last, we, we, on our way to Miabar, we came across way a, out stone, of a, a stone giant, um, I'm not sure if it was a raid because I don't think it was a temple. We came across a, a few stone giants, uh, which, uh, I like to think that stone giants, yeah, yeah. when traveling in a herd, like to go by stoners. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Stoners. Um, so it was like already like a ruined fortress, uh, fortress and then they were just like leveling giants. it. And we decided to maybe take off a little bit of steam from from Yartar and from honestly Third Rock's death. He's he was starting to come back, maybe more vocal and feeling a little bit more normalized, started uh, combat off right, and the boys charged in, got real close, and we, through and through, cleared this uh, stone giant ruins pretty easily. Tacitus wow. marked his way towards closer... <laughs> Tacitus marked his way towards uh, a closer 100 mark, and Third Rock um, kind of felt more in tune with uh, battle. And for the first time leaving a big city, you were attacked by them, and you didn't attack them first. <laughs> I mean, technically, we did Tough want defense. to attack them first. <laughs> no, they threw a rock at you to start fight to start the fight. They were like, "Hi, hey, look at That's all these fine. look at these little folk," but they're not threatening. And then they threw a rock jokingly, and you guys were like, "Kill them all!" <laughs> <laughs> you got a fucking problem there, chief. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, we'll pick up right where we left off then. You guys have just slain about four or five stone giants that were kind of peeking this, uh, uh, picking this little ruined area apart. You see that it's been like flat and rocks crushed. Uh, the stone giants uh, lay fallen on the ground. These tunes be too groovy. Uh. <laughs> uh, you also see that they do have like some similar markings that probably places them in the same kind of tribe that uh, Thane Kalithika was from. So still, if either word hasn't gotten entirely out that she's dead, or uh, if word has gotten out, some of her men haven't stopped her her orders to flatten the world, it seems. Are, so we can assume that these are some of... They have, like, uh, markings that look similar to the, the stone giants you encountered in Deadstone Cleft, yes. Yes, yes. But you're also pretty far away from Deadstone Cleft, so chances are these guys may just not know that she's dead. Or be a part of another stone giant collective. We know that <clears throat> there's not just one heading out all of it, so. Yeah. Well, regardless, they're smashing shit. That's not cool. So we stopped it. Fuckers. That's not kosher. Not God kosher. Intended. Okay, fuck. Everybody doing all right? We're all good. Um. Yeah, let's go ahead and say. Passive perception. 
Oh, and Third Rock, thank you for doing the recap. You get an inspiration. Oh, you already had I already one. had, yeah, rough. <laughs> the you one get, time that you I... You have an like, extra I'm... hero point. Oh, okay, cool. I'll take that. That's... They don't stack. Wait, you wait, <laughs> wait. Oh, so you what took away you... that rule? Oh, so I get two, but I can't use two at once. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Sounds good. Ollie Astral and William. Ollie Astral and William G. Whether oh, you William. choose to say anything about it, you guys were kind of watching the fight. Tacitus ran in with his battle brew maul against giants, and you're kind of looking him over. He doesn't have the giant slaying axe on his person. Ooh, well, that uh, that felt good. We we seemed to handle that pretty well. No one went down. No one. Very good. Yeah. Um, Tacitus. A little bit. <laughs> nothing. Nothing unusual. Uh, just, just felt like swinging the old slug around, or. Where's your axe, friend? Hmm. Out of my hands for now. Astral kind of like staring off into the distance, seemingly calculating like what became of the axe is just uh, becoming more and more discontent with the entire situation. I know one thing. It's that uh, we can never stay away from you for long. I'm sure we'll figure something out. You know... You did well without it, though. Things always end up coming back to their rightful owners one way or another. At least in my experience. Yeah, it's been my experience as well, yeah. Well, technically, the axe didn't belong to the Zentom. It belonged to the son of the guy who owned the keep who was arrested for committing murder. And murders it has completed. <laughs> and murders it shall continue to commit. Either way. A trade for a trade. And I made that fucking dude a promise, so... I'll deal with that later. As for now... Best we get a move on away from this place. I mean, now there's perfectly good runes here that stone giants chose to destroy. Maybe let's give it a once over and then start heading off to the uh, meetup point where the dragon gold dusts. So yes, perhaps. Uh, I, I would love to spend hours, days just investigating what has been destroyed here, but uh, I, I understand we do have. Other pressing matters to come to, but I I agree that some inquisition, the f the fire in our bellies is fading, the combat has passed, and I it's been a while since I've treated myself to a good ruin. Uh, sounds like that's what we're going to do, Mister DM. Make it your way onward. Uh, we're gonna. Give the runes a one good glance over, see if there's anything notable, and then start making our way to the meetup point. Give it once over. It's pretty long abandoned. You don't see anything of any particular note. They already kind of came through and roughed it up a little bit more. As far as what it probably was, this is like a little bit north of Miabar. So it's probably like one of like the smaller settlements that existed before the full river settlement was uh, completely enacted. And then just kind of everyone moved closer to the river, so... There's really no need for some of these nicer buildings. You meant this far out of town. Yarta, right? You guys are up hmm? north of Miabar right now. Uh, We're so I, Miabar wait. is way up north. Yeah, you guys went we to Miabar and did your shopping hand wave yeah. last at the end of the session, and then we threw a random oh. encounter as you guys made your way back oh, to the air right. balloon. Okay, because yeah, yeah, we could just... not go to Yarta to shop. Cool, yeah, the map looked a little too tropical. <laughs> I think it's a palm tree. Don't worry I about think. it. <laughs> the map is just it's, a tool for combat. It's just very, very, very dark green because of how rich the soil is, because of how close we are to the runoffs of the exactly. moderate mountain. Also, it's a tool for a RP. Stream. It's a yeah. tool for RP. <laughs> Magic. Anyways, like I'm going to say... take one of those giant skulls and I'm fucking out of here. We can take all the giant skulls. We still get paid for those. We don't, we don't got... You want to carry one? Yeah, sure. If it means making money. We're not going to lug around 
dragon skulls and just four giant skulls on this airship. Wait, I, I so understand. wait. The dragon skull was optional. Yeah, we like did the pay battle map. For these. <laughs> <laughs> so wait, we're north of Miabar, which means that we're just headed straight to where? Brinchander? That's sort of the idea. Oh, so wait. We're just entirely skipping Mirabar? We're not doing anything in Mirabar? We shot We it. did in Mirabar. We, we, Do you not remember the I'm last half hour of the session? <laughs> Pause. I'm saying that we're not having anything there. Like, we're not gonna... That was your idea. <laughs> no, I... To I fast track was... and get shopping. Nothing happens in Mirabar of particular note. You guys shopped. Dalton, you said you wanted to shop for some stuff as well, right? Did you get a list for me? Because Lane ended up, uh, Lane wanted to run some charges by you before you confirmed he spent that much money. Yeah, that's kind of why I wanted to have a moment in Mirabar. Uh, so, that's... express hey, that. Every... Don't ask if anybody else has a moment. <laughs> hey everybody, how's it going? Uh, I, your lovely wizard, come to you with a trade deal. Uh, only, only nine thousand nine hundred and ten gold. <laughs> huh? For but, what? I will also be selling a bunch of stuff. Uh, so, uh, spells and, uh, spell components. 9,000? That's how much, uh, these things end up costing for a wizard. Uh, currently, since I did upgrade, update the group stash bank, we are sitting at a grand total. Uh, where is the stash bank? It's like 33,000. Uh, 1,230 platinum pieces and 1,360 gold pieces. Can you update uh, it that's in like, the... That's uh, like 22,000 gold, right? Yeah, that's 22,000 gold. That's already inside the group stash bank. And the reason why I wanted to have a moment in the bar was because uh, there were some items that I wanted to run by you up, uh, about selling, Terry. Uh, the notable ones being the uh, uh, art that we found from Venom Fig's cave, the silk robe with a gold embroidery, the jeweled wooden mirror, the two mage spell books that I no longer need, the 18 gems, uh, and the warhammer with the sapphire on top of it that we found inside of the ice uh, giant place. No, not ice giant. Uh, no, we found that inside of the oracles. Yeah. Lane, can you update the group stash bank in the Discord? It, it should already be updated. Uh, they were mage stat block books, right? Yes, which means that they go up to 5th level Cone of Cold. Okay, yeah. Both get 100 platinum pieces for the books. Cool. So Like 100 have... each. Cool, so 200. So that brings us up to... You guys get enough shopping episode last week? Buckle up. We're back to the shopping yeah. episode. <laughs> <laughs> Crack open a cold one with your boys. and you get a long rest at any point? He's off. I'm going to kill him this time. <laughs> 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 I tried to make it. All right, which cursed? I, I mean, which items do you want to buy today? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, that's kind of where we're sitting right now on gold. It is updated inside the stash bank. Uh, that the spells include some of the illusion stuff that Jade and I, Jade and Jaden and I were talking about earlier as well, including scrying, which will be very useful for people. <clears throat> All I, think I gave you spells. a total number of gold pieces. All the gems and artwork was fourth, right? Yes, they totaled in at uh, six hundred and fifty. Yeah, it's still it's that. still showing me that the last update to the t the grand total was last year. Yeah, but it says edited at the bottom. Oh, I thought it dragged it back down to the bottom, like no, to just the bottom edits of the chat. So people, you, oh, you've already got okay, the chief cool. gus stuff, right, Lane? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can get rid of that one. The cheap gust stuff has been included. The ruby necklace was included and sold? Yes. And, and so it was whatever the plus would... 900 gold pieces. With that current okay. update, that puts us there. Okay, cool. Well, because <clears throat> uh, Third Rock wants to run something by William if we're gonna let's RP right now. If we're really spending money, um, Third Rock is kind of just going to, like, maybe silently go on a sh on a shopping with William so that he can, like, you know, William's teaching him Arcana, so he's maybe a little bit more interested just for the thoroughness of his own uh, proficiency and is learning, like, maybe a little bit more of, like, the magic buying side and just silently observing. Uh, when we leave shop, uh, 
Third Rock would like to talk to William about property. I have to do some typing real quick. Property? We're getting into real estate again? I don't property want to get into real estate right now. <laughs> it's more of a Third Rock venture that would be paid off. Um, uh, while that's queuing up, anybody that plans on drinking while in Mia Bar, give me a uh, perception check. Okay. You got it. I'm going to go ahead and say William was probably too busy doing All right, like, Astral. Uh, bell searching. <laughs> All right, Ollie. Uh, you okay. guys pick up some uh, some rumors uh, just kind of floating around the world right now. Give me one second. And, uh, Terry, I know we mentioned, uh, talking about buying potion stuff in Mirabar. Um, yeah. I would have bought 200 gold pieces worth of ingredients. Okay. I will minus that from... Oh, wait, uh, you were using the gold that you already took from the stash bank, right? Yeah. Cool. Mm -hmm. that, that was already taken out. Are there any reputable smiths in Mirabar so we can get this, uh, scale armor made? Uh, yeah, there's plenty of fine dwarven smiths here near uh, Dwarven Kingdom, so. Yeah, these guys don't fuck around. <laughs> okay, Terry, I can't find anything on it, but as far as owning um, a temple. Because in the beginning, you told me the general prices for each one when I told you that I wanted a, to make a small shrine. And now we have, I think we have enough money to where... If the group approved and, and Third Rock sent the resources and did most of the managing of it, that I could get property in uh, Brinchander and basically appoint and do sending spells and, and basically manage a small temple of all gods. Uh, and I would start with basically a lot of the gods that were <clears throat> a little bit more common and the gods that I've, I've had encounters with. And then from there, just grow and kind of I need to get a bigger building and have take on maybe some employees and some younger apprentices who help around. Ask my mom to do some uh, some socializing and see if she can't find other clerical or spiritual people. Um, I think it was like pulling rules from 3.5. A simple house was a thousand, a grand house was five, a mansion was a hundred, a tower was fifty, a keep one fifty, castle five hundred, huge castle one million, and a moat with a bridge fifty thousand. I want a bridge. You, you kind of broke it. Like, I just want something that's like temple size. You're looking at least a grand, if not five or ten. A thousand, of like a thousand gold pieces, that's it? If not five or ten. <laughs> let's, well then, let's, let's come up with a number, because if William's about to spend nine thousand on spells and stuff, I would like to... You're not even in the city that has real estate for sale yet. <laughs> We're not going to put know. a number well, on anything. <laughs> I, I, Carrie, I'm, I'm saying this... Y'all got listings for Bryn Shander and Miabar. <laughs> you can come up with, so I don't just blindside you and ask you questions that might need to think about i'm just more of like so for right now let's just go stories. ahead and say that you've brought it to william's attention that you want him to keep an eye out for affordable real estate in brinchander temple-sized real estate temple-sized real estate in brinchander uh moving on with all the stuff that i sold any objections to william spending money on those spells and whatnot do what you gotta do my man Cool. I don't have a problem with it. Can while we're in, while we're here, uh -huh, can, this dude's class features cost money. Can, can <laughs> we? Can, can we do the, the the translation for the copper pieces and the silver pieces into gold? Uh, Terry yeah. told me no. Really? If you're in a town. You can go to a bank and do it. I just told you not to do it on a fucking on the Discord. Fly, yeah, yeah that's, that's what that's what I was thinking. Okay, uh, cool. Then for expedience to say, yeah, William did taxes and shit and ran some stuff through out of bank. <laughs> All I, my friends William, are getting drunk. William knows how to do his taxes for sure. <laughs> I would I'm, like to pull into the stash bank as well to purchase two short swords. Alright, uh did you still lose your shield? He left it. 
<laughs> but we're not technically there yet. <laughs> it's like, okay. yeah, he does leave the shield behind. Ash was uh, looking for a blacksmith. So, 200 um, gold pieces. If you want... Wait, two short swords cost. How much do they cost? Not 200. <laughs> if you want legitimate dragon scale mail, it's going to cost you 15,000 gold pieces. If you want scale mail with dragon scales, it'll cost you significantly less money. Um. Well, we, don't, uh, we obviously don't have that kind of money to spend for legitimate dragon scale. A lot of fucking get it commissioned later. Yeah, that is also true. Perhaps I can cut a deal with the dwarf. What would you offer? Um, I'd say about half of that full cost with the with the guarantee that we'd be back through him for more business. You want half off as long as you come back as a customer later? Yeah. It's not worth seven and a half thousand gold. <laughs> he doesn't okay. know that. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. We, we, that's fine. That's, that's, that's fair. That's fair. There was, there was, that was a reach. That was a bit of a reach. <laughs> um, how about, uh, Let's say 30% off, and we give them half of it up front. And the dragon scales are included from you guys? You could probably do that. That's a decent offer. But if you don't, if you don't pay by an elected date after the completion, he gets to keep the armor and the money. Um... Collateral. Go How, and tell William mm -hmm. he won't forget, and he'll bug the whole group. <laughs> All right. Okay. So with that, with that part being said, is there any way we can work out like an extended date due to us doing what we're doing? I'll work on the the numbers for that. Yeah. Okay. So can I get, can I get the two short swords though? So I'd say fifteen hundred divided uh, times. I'd say thirty percent off. Yeah. So minus four five. So fifteen. 1500 minus 45 uh 10,500 gold oh fuck okay and we're so, paying and, and then half of that up front is 5000 mm -hmm. 5000 something right half up front cool. half at the end so can do we'll pay 2000 uh, oh, divided by 5 uh 5250 gold would he be willing to take um take uh, some magical items to bring that price down a little bit more. What are you offering him? Uh, my bug smashers. He thinks an adventurer would be more willing to buy those than a blacksmith. That's fair. That's very fair. He thinks that. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, if so if he thinks that do, like, do adventurers not often come through here, or...? Eh, give me a persuasion check. All I'm saying is I've gotten some good-ass... Uh, I've gotten some <laughs> hey, good-ass... Hey, guess believe. what I get to do? Guess what I get to do? Huh. Hey, oh, dragon I bitch! I get to roll it again! <laughs> <laughs> you can just get advantage on it, right? Um, I, I keep rolling until it, until I make a success. Jesus As a dragon? Christ. Does it work that way, or is it if you if it, it doesn't help you get you to reroll it once to try it again. Uh, per right. attempt, but yeah. you don't use it up if it fails. All right, so go ahead and roll another flat persuasion then. Just roll a d20 to uh. Just, just roll, roll the another persuasion. Again. We'll just take the left number. Da 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 da. da where it is? <laughs> you don't lose the 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 class feature, but no, he's not he's not feeling the bug smashers. Okay, so you said five thousand and twenty on top right now. Five thousand two fifty. Thousand two fifty. Cool. So that's five hundred and twenty-five platinum. Five hundred and twenty-five platinum. Leaves us with nine hundred and five platinum pieces. You tried to give him copper. <laughs> you cool with that <laughs> price then, Sean? Yeah, that's cool. 
Okay. Uh, anything, anyone? Oh, yeah. Uh, he wants short to buy sword. short swords. Yeah. Uh, short sword. Short Weapons. This will tell me how much they cost. Exactly. Simple melee weapons. It says 10 gold on the I, on the inventory thing, but I'm not going to... Uh, oh, for, for two short swords, so it would be 20 gold. A but short sword is a martial weapon, short huh? swords, uh, <laughs> dwarf be ever made. Yeah, it's 10 gold each. Oop. I thought I could have sworn that short sword was a simple melee weapon. It, uh, oh, yeah. Easy peasy, that's 20 gold, no problemo. Okay, anything else, guys? That's it. You bought those. We if anyone knows the recipe to some giant strength potion. Uh, yeah. Can we say like when William was doing a bunch of his magical shopping, he could have maybe also helped by asking around for some magical. Uh, I'm definitely here? when I'm buying my oh, yeah. potion ingredients. I'm just gonna ask about if anyone has any recipes they'd be willing to part with for some stories, recipes of my own, or some gold. Plenty of nice blacksmiths in Nia Bar. Not a crazy yeah, that's amount true. of apothecaries. <laughs> he could always go teleporting with William. I mean, imagine at one point I had... Not a lot of magic shops teleport. in my world. <laughs> I have plans if you guys want to find recipes. Okay. Oh, our master anymore. We do want to find recipes. Just... <laughs> All right. Then... Anything else? Alright, you guys are all kind of gathered outside, deciding what comes next. Do you go straight to Svardborg, or do you guys stop in Bryn Shander? Or do you do Bryn Shander after Svardborg? Mm. He's up in Third Rock's hands. Oh, rumors. I had you roll for those. Uh, yeah. Tacitus, you heard something about Luskin and instantly ran away, so you don't know what the rumor was. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you assumed they were talking about the cops. Yeah. Uh, Astral, uh, you hear rumors of a pretty large frost giant attack on the town of Luskin. Excellent. <laughs> you know, I'll actually say both of you hear about Luskin's, uh, the attack on Luskin. Uh, you both hear about the attack on Fireshear as well. Uh, Astral, you also hear that Port Last was recently attacked by uh, frost giants. Frost giants are working their way all the way up, all up and down the coast. So the pretty much the so we, the three coastal cities below the moving the sea of moving ice have been raided and attacked by frost giant ships. Okay, in, now hear hear me out. So in what order? Uh, Fire Shear, uh, Port Last, then Luskin. Yeah, I was gonna try to I was gonna try to RP that. <laughs> But um, from a word word around Miabar right now is that the frost giants have been making their way down the coast, and uh, going based off what they said, we can only assume that they're probably going to move on to Neverwinter. Uh, Astral twenty seven. You also hear rumors that the uh, dwarvish uh, stronghold uh, Citadel Felbar. Uh, has recently had issues with uh, fire giants, and uh, you guys know that their base is kind of close to that dwarven settlement. You also hear like rumors of like uh, bipedal yak people. Bipedal what? Yak people. That sounds yak fey. People. Like yak folk. That sounds fey. <laughs> uh, so, Ollivander, I, I, I have a question. Feel free to ask. Uh, so while we were while we were enjoying our, our drinks, I, I heard something about yak people. Do you know anything about that? You know? Do I know anything about yak people? Um, <laughs> they're not fae. <laughs> oh shit! I I remember <laughs> drinking in a wilderness circle outside of Go ahead and give me a, a dwarven stronghold. Oh, a what? Uh, Arcana track. Arcana. Twenty-one. Um, you haven't inter interacted with them very much. Let me pull this up out of the book real quick. Fire giants.
Sorry, give me one second. No problem. Wiggle, 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 wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Dun, 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 dun. Wait. Oh my gosh. There was a moment where I was drinking to the point of blacking out completely, and we were in a, a drinking circle with a, a band of dwarves, and I woke up, and there was... I couldn't tell if I was imagining this, or if the dwarves' beards had grown and covered their whole bodies, but they looked to be... And I looked to be surrounded by people that looked like what you describe as yak people. I, uh... I had some communication with them, but I was in a very deluded, delusional state for most of it. Um, yak folk are kind of like magical, half yak, half human, nothing. Like, they're not half human, but they're just like humanoid gotcha. yak people. Uh, mm -hmm. They're magical. They, at one point in their history, uh, the god of their people uh, defeated or bested a uh, one of the gods of the the genies in a in some sort of a competition, and the yak folk Finland. had control over the uh, the Daos, the earth elementals, or the earth uh, mm. the earth jins. Mm -hmm. uh, they since then lost the power for everyone in the race to do that, but some yak folk are still powerful and possess elemental power. It uh, was a very interesting uh, it's experience also... I had makes sense that they'd be working with fire giants as they are uh, renowned slavers. Yeah, uh, didn't make much conversation with them. Uh, huh. Good to know. Well, uh, another thing along with the frost giants is that um, they've been seen across uh, near the Dorvish stronghold of Felbar. There's also been fire giants attack, attacks there, and we also know that the fire giants are an iron slag, which isn't too far off. Right. So it's safe to say that the frost giants and fire giants are moving at the same time unbeknownst to each other. Mm. The last thing you hear, Astral with a 27, is uh, you don't hear like much on it, and then you try to press the person knowing you, but they just don't know anything just because it's so far away. Uh, there's a rumor going around about uh, citizens of Daggerford have reported like a, a horrendously hideous giants near them. Oh, no. Wait. You, what, giants? Dagger, that's way south. Oh, no. It cut out for me. What giants? Uh, ugly like, giants. Uh, super ugly. Oh, ugly. hell yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, they're from Morian time. Super, yeah, they're from Morian giants are as well. Daggerford. Near the Lizard Marsh. People around Daggerford have heard it. The, Daggerford's not even on this map, is it? Way yes, south. it is. Way down south. It's over by the, the water. Okay, marsh. cool. Sorry, I was, it was just being covered up by the... Uh, it's the it's south of water. Locations near Daggerford, you have the uh, Delimber Vale, the Misty Forest, and the Lizard Marsh. Water deep. Or the High Moor, I guess, is close as well. I still have a task I need to fulfill in water deep. And a side quest that we never did in Nightstone. Moving on. <laughs> Do you share that with the rest of the group, though? Yes, I do. I I share the fami the Fomorian information with Ollivander specifically. I think you'll notice a twitch from William when you mention Port Last. <laughs> they seem to be moving rapidly and expanding their territory. Fortunately, we can't be everywhere at once. And I know we are making our way to Svartborg as we speak, but God, that, that frustrates me. That frustrates me that we cannot be all that is needed right now. It seems almost like it. the way that they're moving seems almost like it's being facilitated by a tactician 
Uh, like, so far, none of the three locations have been like completely defeated. They've just been like raided multiple times. Right, but right. It, it, just to, especially with the frost giants, with the way that they're moving. Oh yeah. Get away. Like granted, granted they haven't been defeated, but still they've been raiding the entire coast. And, and there's not strategy. Not everyone's at home. And, and 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 it's not like they're communicating with one another to facilitate a strategy. It's just happening naturally, which is what which is what I think is like all too strange because we have Fomorians attacking from the south, fire giants attacking from the east, and then um frost giants on the coast in the west. Here we sit in the middle. Well, um, we have gotten resources here, and we have set a destination, and we are at least aware now of the hearsay of where things are moving. So, team, how are we feeling about Moving in to start intercepting some of this again. The faster we move, move, I think, the better. We can't just uh, sit in a standstill and try and think of what we're going to do. I've made that mistake too many times. Well, when we move, it must be together. Well then, I mean, we're already the closest to, uh, to, not, how does, dang, I'm gonna move on that. We're already the closest to Sparborg. I mean, with, with our path that we've led so far, I, it might be backtracking to pick a further destination. We might as well see this through. Right. Uh, I mean, meant to check in with all of you, uh, you know, being the forefront of defense, while it is necessary right now, it, it is not easy. And I know we've faced some bumps in the road that are not quite giant-sized, but are substantial to us in our own ways. So it, it, it would be foolish to rush in headfirst to stop this without ensuring we are in a, a good place to do so. I appreciate you checking in, Ollivander. I, uh, I think it's it's imperative that we are not too in our heads about it, and we're also that we're doing okay mentally, physically, and that we're doing okay together as a team. As a band of friends. Um, I've been meaning to ask you something in particular about. Well, it's only become more interesting to me now that the Fomorians are getting closer from the south. And again, it's only a rumor. I, uh, I've been, <laughs> I, I, I've been wanting to ask you a little bit about what that's like, what Fomorians truly are threatening here, because I, I got a lot on my, uh, ancestral side that I'm not totally aware of. Um, I just know my grandma was an elf. And uh, what the Fomorians' plans are, it really scares me. And what that might mean. Well, uh, I... At this point, I can only speculate as to what these creatures could want. They, uh... Whenever the kindest or the smartest 
they they seemed rather hyper aggressive any time I tried to communicate with them. But if I had to reach, and from what I've seen, they have a leader now, and a leader who will guide them to what they want. And they don't like the elves very much, but good reason. Uh, simply because they were monsters before they looked monstrous and the elves helped to reflect that and with a curse they bestowed their looks upon them we, we can only speculate and so at this time I will not speculate or what, what will come but um The elves have withstood for eons and centuries. Of various peoples have tried to see them exsanguinated from this land. So they they have persisted, and they will continue to persist. Not to worry, Derek. That's what has interested me most about them, especially as I. As I devote my time, as I devote my energy, there is something that I'm tapping into that that's truly interesting and, and surpassing that it was, I'm tapping into an energy that is wild like and I can see that it has been around so much longer before any of us and that it will continue to persist as you say um and you know I I want to be a beacon of hope for each of you in my actions and what I say and what I do. I got it, Lane. But that's interesting. I think I want to learn more. I want to learn learn more about what came before, what has influenced, has brought me here, and it's uh, it's fascinating to me because I truly think you know I came from a place of. rugged grit and persistence but those folks failed me and uh, it's interesting to see this new perspective on persistence <clears throat> I'm sure we can talk on the airship a great deal if you are curious about your family's history or at least your ancestry's history. I studied a great deal with a few tribes of elves in this area. I I know you say you only knew your grandmother, but um, you and I we we tap into a similar type of magic, and uh, I believe this is new for you. Yes. I feel like it's it's always been around me with Shantea being a guiding light for my family and for what we grow. Um, but tapping into this, is it's, it is new. It's new to me in this way, yeah. It has always existed and it will always be new. Hmm. That is... That is the greatest gift it can give us, is is what is new. And all of you, we, in whatever way or another, we all have ties, family, that which came before and that which comes after. And third rock, we are, I understand, going to visit those ties of yours. I've, I've always been curious to, to meet your family. 
your mother that you speak so highly of. Uh, but all of us, no matter how estranged or how recently we've discovered them, we all we all have what binds us here, and I just I want to make sure that we're connecting with that before we move on and face what lies beyond, because we are stronger with what is at our backs. I don't know you there, buddy. Yeah, I'm here. I, I'm sorry. The the conversation went from Derek uh, talking to Ollie that I heard something about Third Rock, and then I started talking, realized I was muted, and then didn't want to interrupt. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, I, I well, it's not so much my family or any Brinchander isn't like my home. That's just where the person that I I feel I care most about is is at right now my my brother and my father and 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 his side of the family are all off in um uh durward or drewerwood um uh, they're 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 they roam around they live semi-nomadically and um sell goods and herbs well then the piece of your home that lives within your mother is the home we shall visit and I look forward to experiencing that with you all the same. Yeah, Gentlemen. It'll, um, it'll be interesting. That's that's quite for sure. Gentlemen, there's something we've yet to address about what we're about to get going towards. And that's how we intend to go at it. Now, I know we've used diplomatic means in the past, but... Something tells me this is about to get straight fucking brutal. I feel that instinct as well. Are you ready for that? And he Tacitus just kind of looks at all of the group, just kind of like... Stop. Hush. These guys are hardcore fucking warriors. It would be at this moment that you realize that during this whole time, William has just been staring down at thousands of dollars with the spell components, just fucking writing in his book. <laughs> uh, All and right. kind of closes it. <clears throat> yes. The approach. Um, my recommendations, I figure we can either attempt to gather some information in Brun Shander or Iron Master. Those are closest. It would probably be nice not to go in blind to the situation. I mean, I'm assuming you guys didn't hear anything about their actual stronghold. Seems like I don't think it's very known. But uh, yeah, beyond that, it does seem like this is the all for nothing push. If we don't get this conch, then we'll have to go and track down the storm giants. I mean, the cloud giants again. And that doesn't really seem like a viable option. So. As far as politics go, I don't see them being our main priority with this group, but that's just my opinion. Really, I'm going to go back to his spells. We will speak the language that they understand. And for this group, that is brutality, and that is bloodshed. The only language that, is that Tacitus speaks better than the rest of you. And ironically, Ollie is the only one who doesn't speak giant. Excuse me? Oh, Wait, you do speak giant. giant. I for sure. Who doesn't speak giant? Derek. I, Derek. Derek. That's the one. <laughs> I don't that's speak, I speak giant. broken giant. The old... So, yeah, uh, we're probably yeah. headed off to Bryn Shander then. All right. Try and see if yep. we can't gather some information. You Say all have a camp outside of the town. Perhaps your last night around a campfire before you hit the airship. Um, Anything else anybody wants to do around the fire before you make way for the next morning? Honestly, I wanted to do this as we were heading out from the the stone giants, but Third Rock's gonna ju kind of just like like whip out his horn and like look at it and like clean it up and clear it out and then just and just like see if he can still hit the same notes that 
that third rock once innocently enjoyed playing while he was walking down a road and kicking it at camp. Wow. He can Playing hit the notes. <laughs> Still can hit the notes, baby. Still can just just jamming out. Jamming out on the horn skis. Everyone hears um. Third Rock begin to play a little bit of music on his horn. Derek will uh, pop a squat next to Tacitus. <clears throat> And uh, takes a sip from his water, skin, uh, screws it back on, slings it back over his shoulder. <clears throat> How are you holding up, my green old man? Pass this is just kind of going to pull off of his, uh, <laughs> his mall for a sec. Just kind of staring in the fire and without it's looking at you. Funny to think how proficient he's probably gotten at drinking out of that thing because it's like a it's a mall, but the mm-hmm. taps on the bottom of the shaft. So you gotta like. Fuck. I'll let you hold Come the on. hammer tomorrow, but it's Come pretty down. it's pretty easy to hold a heavy hammer from bottom side up. You well, this just is like literally got a like... mall. This isn't like a little battle hammer. Oh, I just wait until tomorrow, buddy. I, okay, okay. Regardless. <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> But no, he just kind of just and then just chugs, takes a little takes a little shot of Rooney off it, and just without saying or without looking at it, he just got I'm tired, and that's all he's gonna say. <clears throat> I uh, I let the silence kind of like linger as we stare at the fire, and I'm like, kind of almost enjoy the silence and. Uh, kind of be in presence of the crackling uh, for a little bit and uh, and then eventually begin to uh, say something again and uh... <clears throat> it's okay to be tired um It's okay to be lost. I know, uh, I know when my brother died, I felt like I didn't have any purpose at all. That I, uh, that I made a mistake in indecision. And that costed his life. And I had to find purpose again. And that shit is tiring and it is fucking hard. I will never not deny that. I was taught how to be persistent and enduring. I was told that, well, life is suffering, so you might as well learn how to suffer so that others can suffer less. I thought that's bullshit. So, I got the scars on my back to prove it. And I know you got plenty of scars all over your body that tell you our stories. His eyebrow raises for a half second and then kind of just like, yeah. Go ahead. Whatever we're told to believe, suffering must happen to know how to endure. It's all bullshit. can learn how to cope through that suffering while also being willing to accept and be ever present in jubilance and in joy so you look at that fire Tacitus 
You see the spark, the light, the warmth that it gives you. That's light that will fade away in time. By the morning, it'll be gone. The fire has been around since before you and I could even walk. And fire will be around much, much longer when we're in the ground. There is hope. There is light to look back to. You can find it. And just because I did doesn't mean that I know you will. Because we're all our own person, right? But I hope it makes it easier to know that people can find it again once it's lost. And I love you as a brother, as someone who has defended you, someone who has fought for you, for this mission. Especially recently, when you saved my life and Ollivander's life through Nonviolence, which is incredible. I did not expect that. And I will forever be grateful for that, that moment that you sacrificed. Thank you for that. I just, I know what being tired feels like, and I know I'm young as fuck. <laughs> and so that may not mean as much coming from me, but I just want you to know that I care about you. Then I'm here for you if you need anything. And I don't want to lecture you. That's not what I'm here for. I just wanted to reassure you. Tacitus has been intermittently focusing in on what you were saying through his, like, half-drunken stupor. Yeah. And mostly focused on the way that the wind was pushing the last little backdraft of smoke up into the air and like listening to that nice little like white noise static and howl that you get when you're out camping just that like gentle wind and then Derek said the word love to Tacitus and that was the like first time in a very very long time that Tacitus has heard that word and he felt like the kick of it and it weirded him out, right? <laughs> just immediately, like, taken back by it, but also just kind of a bit, like, sorrow-filled at how long it's been since he's heard that word. And while taking in everything that was just, like, dropped right there, he just is going to, like, look over. He's just going to put the battle broom all down, and he's going to look at you, and he's be like, I love you, too. And just, like, that's all he could, like, really focus on in that. And he heard you. I just, like, just, like, Dakota to Trent, I, I did. But, like, he's he's a bit taken back. He doesn't really think about what he did as, like, sacrifice. He just kind of looks at it as, as like, another chink in the armor of his, like, wear and tear, what he has experienced. And he knows that, like, in his heart, he doesn't want to just, like, drop dead. If someone yeah. has to be there to tank the hits. And mitigate. Albeit, yeah, he's a greasy old fucking old bastard. Yeah. But he's also easy. 
You've got a little brain in there somewhere. And... Yeah, just personally, I want you to know that, like, the biggest thing that I took away from all of that was, like, Tacitus knows what it is that he's, what his purpose is in this yeah. moment. And, like, he does. Like, you did, you just, you hit him with the, in that moment of, like, why, why, why do we fight? Why do we put ourselves through this? Yeah. You know, why? Why are we these band of misfits going together to go and raid these impossible enemies and milestone experience? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We all Absolutely. Care. And uh, Derek's just gonna be like, taxes. <clears throat> "I." It means the world to hear you say it. Um, I have a question for you, if you don't mind. I hope I don't pry. Oh, uh, I mean, I'm an open book. <clears throat> I wanted to ask about yes. why you feel tired, why you might I feel, feel lost, and and uh, centered on that, I want to ask about the faith you hold in your Orc God. And why you feel like a lot of what you've been through is taken away. I mean, if you look at everything that's gone on since just the very beginning, the only thing I really have to hold on to has been Bogtrum. That's it. Everything else was just being a slave up until the point that I was combat ready and then murder. And then eventual freedom followed by a subsequent just mercenary work out of the blue. And then eventually met up with you guys. That's that's it. And I, I know you know what it's like to experience loss, but imagine only finding out how powerful loss can be after living a life not knowing just how fucked up it really was. Hard to explain. All I know is the only thing that God has ever done for me was to tell me to throw everything I have at violence and aggression and bloodshed. It's gotten me fucking nowhere. It's time for time for me to become the beast I worship. I don't want to do it for anybody else anymore. Other than this pile of misfits that I call family. Hey, what are you barking at? That's why I'm here. Yeah. You don't owe that old bastard in the sky anything. Just as I don't owe the god Elmater of Endurance my blood anymore. You're damn right. I'm proud of you, Tacitus. It's gonna be hard. It has been. But you're not alone. Don't you ever fucking forget it. For narrative reasons, Tacitus is gonna nod at you and then just kind of quiet down and stare back into the fire. You got it, buddy. You got it. 
And you're kind of sitting there. You've been drinking now, for sure. Whether you put the mole down before the conversation going on in the background. Started. Do what? It said all the while, high school musical happening in the background. <laughs> you kind of, like, hear your friends playing, playing their instruments. Derek's thoughts kind of resonate for a moment. You're drunk. It's cold. You're surrounded by people that you love. What is Tacitus thinking in regards of uh, fuck, uh, Fog True right now? Your mind kind of like pushes towards your your religious beliefs now. Tacitus is honest to himself thought in the very moment when he thinks of the association between Bog True and how he feels is fuck that god. That's it. Sorry, I didn't hear anything it just happened. Oh, I said, and, and that's it. He's 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 pretty much just the way he's looking at it is essentially his very minimal understanding of the afterlife. Is he he just wants the gods to just do their thing and vie for his soul at the end of it. He's done caring who fucking wants it now. He's gonna do living for him. And he's gonna try to like he's giving up that last little bit of home in exchange for a reason to keep going now. The music causes your mind to wander again. You see yourself almost standing the perspective, from the perspective of a person in the crowd. You see below the rhythmic sound of battle that uh, begins to drift into your ears. You see a much younger, in his prime, definitely more brutal, Tacitus Thunderbelly fighting in the ring and you almost lock eyes with this memory with your own self just to see where it started and who you were what you looked like you see the eyes look back and this Tacitus looks at you you've grown old you no longer fight in the ring and you're sitting at a campfire surrounded by your friends and he looks at you with a face of disgust. I get it. Tacitus is just gonna look down at his belly. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna look at young Tacitus and he's gonna go you were wrong. Prove it. Ollivander, Third Rock, and Derek, you all feel the hair on your neck stand up as you feel a very strong, oppressively divine force around you. As Tacitus, you fall asleep and are pulled into that dream. You okay. are now standing in the ring with your younger self. What do you do? <laughs> can I make... What can... do I have? Oh, fuck. You look to your side. What do you see? What does is, what is Tacitus expect to see when he looks to his side? When he looks to his side? In the arena? Well, it, his... where, does, where does he look first? Does he look for like what he has equipped it? Or does he look around for weapons? I feel like his memory would actively just trigger the weapons in the arena exclusively, so probably just a battle hammer. Yeah, you look to the right in the sand as a battle hammer. And that's what he's going to take. You reach for the battle hammer before you can make it there, outpaced by your younger self. <laughs> Cuts towards your hand. You have to pull back to avoid getting uh, uh, cut by the blade. You see the familiar head of the giant slaying axe wielded by younger Tacitus. Oh, yeah. 
That's good stuff. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you didn't make it to the Warhammer. What do you do? I didn't make it. I'm going to try and just fucking go for him. Fuck it. All right, you rush forward. You just try to tackle. Go ahead and give me an athletics check. Go ahead and roll another one for me, please. Oh, yeah. You... Ooh, I get advantage because I'm young Tacitus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck. Oh, you younger just... <laughs> As you rush forward, you grab towards the waist. You feel a Oh, blow in the side as you're pushed to the side of him as he easily pushes you away. <laughs> he pushes me away? out of touch. You don't have the flame in you anymore. It's better if we just snuff it out right here and now. I'm worthy to kill us, aren't I? You're what? I'm worthy to kill us, aren't I? Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you do? And he's <laughs> He's gonna go for the Warhammer again if he can. Yeah, diving to the side at this point, he pushed you away, you hit the ground as you pick yourself up, you bring the Warhammer around a swing at him. Just go ahead and roll a weapon. Alright. Can it be Battle Brew? That's fine. It's the same modifiers, essentially. 24 definitely hits. Go ahead and roll. Not worried about the damage. You, you, you hit him. Okay. She brings the shield up. You see the big emblazoned letters of the DN, uh, DNR shield uh, that he has on his back as he kind of you hit the blow onto the uh, like the elbow with the warhammer cracks under for that. He just kind of stands up, kind of shrugs it off, and goes for the offensive. At this point, uh, you see the axe come slashing up. You barely manage to dip back away, and as you kind of look down, you do have a slight cut up your chest. Very sharp blade. You should know. What do you do? Do I take do I take actual damage? Just just go with it. All right. One, um, I'm gonna try and grapple him again. I'm gonna try and tackle him to the ground. All right. You kind of rush forward again. Go ahead and roll once, and then once for me as well. You rush forward, blinding in rage now at this point. You uh, grab by both legs and lift your younger self up, pitting you both prone to the ground. Uh, you kind of uh, look up, and you can see like the smiles beginning to creep across as the battle starting to heat up. Are you saying anything? Yeah. Wait, do I have him pinned? Uh, you put him on the ground. It's like you shove him. or You, you guys are like wrestling or whatever. All right, I'm going to try to just go for a full pin. Yeah. I'm just gonna try and just get on top just of him. Just You're holding him down right now. That's fine. Uh, what, right. what are you doing and saying? Are you still just trying I'm, to fight him? I'm gonna look at him, and I'm just gonna be like, "We've got this." Um, as you're like trying to pin him down at this point, uh, you feel uh, he hits the is it, uh, the shaft right of the the axe or what is shaft, it, yeah. the handle. And he just, like, bumps me uh, with it? Right in the chest, and essentially, like, with enough force to physically lift you up for a moment, to pin you off and throws you to the side. As he, uh, <laughs> st uh, stands and, like, takes a step to the side, beginning to, like, circle around you, kind of <clears throat> looks down. Look at us. Look at what you did to us, you sad drunk. And he, uh, kind of goes to kick at the side. Uh, just go ahead and roll in on arm strike for me. There it is. 22 he kicks you in the ribs it stings as you kind of roll over before you pick yourself back up out of the dirt what do you do mm. yeah so this is he's just gonna stand there he just took it and he's just gonna stand there like do it what we've always wanted, isn't it? You a see. worthy opponent. Sorry. Go ahead. A worthy That's opponent. It. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, he looks at you in the bottom half. You see, like, the teeth, like, grit, grind, and snarls with the mouth. Complete and utter anger. You see a deep look of sadness in the eyes uh, of your younger self as the axe begins to swing uh, towards the neck. How far have we fallen, then? No, I just... 
You took my computer. Can you let him hit you with yeah. the axe? I have it prepped. That's something to do. Am I going to let him hit me with the axe? Yeah. It's coming for your neck. Yeah, he's going to hit me. Can you use one? Hits deep. Oh, you took the tape. Cuts through the flesh. Cuts through the skin. Severs the bone. A good hit. You wouldn't expect anything less from your younger self. <laughs> Knees buckle as you hit the ground. You look up, uh, you see your younger self uh, kind of supports your weight, and as you check the face, it is no longer Tacitus standing in front of you. You see the very angry face of Bogtru. Mm. He's just going to look up at Bogtru, and he's just going to... I'm just mentioning that you were... He's just going to kind of like... Shudder a little bit, and I'm just gonna. Uh, oh, project. so last. What was it? He just he just kind of shuddered, and as like just in a really like with the axe, just kind of dug in. He just kind of goes, oh, so that's just assuming that he's like nearing death, like he is like he's assuming that's just like his like last words in this dream. He's full. He's fully enveloped. You feel that you've been on that dance between life and death before. You can feel the pull beginning, but you're you're still conscious. Something seems okay. to be ebbing it in the other direction as well. Uh, you see, he and just kind of looks like he's uh, the bur the eyebrows furrow, like that flaming eyes almost. Just what a disappointment to me. It's Bogtru's face now? Yeah. You're... Is he is he standing on top of me? Or like, just like... Like, you're down, like, you hit your knees after you got hit in the... Um, hit in the neck, and at this point, you just... There's just this massive, imposing uh, orc in front of you that seemed to have replaced uh, younger Tacitus. Mm. All right. I can swing on that guy. <laughs> you swing uh, on God? Is, is the axe <laughs> still in my neck? Yeah. I'm gonna rip that fucker out and I'm gonna bang a rang him. Yeah, go ahead and rip. <laughs> 24. Uh, you kind of strike out and as you like kind of uh, sink the axe deep into the leg, you see the golden nicker begins to pour as he doesn't even attempt to dodge. He kind of looks. Mm, that's why it's so disappointing. You have no idea how disappointing it was to me as he just kind of like gurgles out like just blood starts pouring out of it what did i do to disappoint you you blood and he's gonna go for another swing <laughs> 27 this time you and he's kind of because he's an imposing like 16 foot tall orc like Attention, like reaching hill giant height here just like in his normal form you kind of like go to sink the axe deep in his chest and he just grabs the blade it does not cut his flesh this time as he kind of just holds the axe in you and he just slowly begins pushing his uh his power and his will onto you you buckle again to your knees the rage still pushing on a fluke He's I'm just gonna try and challenge I'm gonna try and just like stand myself back up you're trying to push against his will as well you see uh he just looks angrily give up on me will you for what reason for what reason he's genuinely asking that He's fucking old. Because <laughs> that <laughs> How do you answer? Look at all the fucking suffering you put me through. For what? Uh is you're kind of pushing back up at that point. <laughs> suffering makes us strong. My chosen few that suffer the most will find a seat at my table. By that logic, I'm at your fucking left hand already. And he's gonna go and he's just gonna like let go of the axe. 
and like try to just like drop it and catch below. He's gonna just like allow the fucking hand and try and swing on the other leg again. <laughs> All right, as you drop it, it's like almost slow motion. You drop the axe, pick it up, you swing it towards, and reality almost shifts and bends. It's now you drive the axe, uh, the giant slayer axe, deep into the scaled neck of Imerith, dealing the killing blow. Lightning cracks across the skies as a uh, uh, Bog True now stands to your right, putting you on his left. Then prove it to me. Oh no. Is he essentially just saying prove it to him by, like, killing the dragon? How do you take that? That's essentially how he takes that. It, it occurs to Tacitus, the... The vision you were granted in the woods of Tribor was not granted to you by Bog True. It was granted to you by Eremith, maybe? It was granted mm. to you by a, a different god when you asked them mm. how soon yeah, the you die. The forest god. Yeah. Ah. And that's why it didn't fucking. Well, they probably showed you the closest possible death. That's fair. People who ordered death at the Eye of the Allfather also were interested in... Pyramid. <laughs> <laughs> Can I help you? It's at that point that Tacitus will kind of just... He's gonna just kind of try and take control of this dream a little bit. And just kind of like... Settle it down to where it's just him looking at Bog True, at least face to face. Like, and. It actually kind of pushes back to that scene with you and him, like, him pushing out each other over the axis control. Then he's gonna just poke his head past the hand, and he's gonna go, Oh, I'll do it. But I'll do it for me. You can't there have you that. <laughs> Been so disappointing to lose one with such bloodlust. As you see at this point, he like uh, completely pushes past you to the ground, putting you down. The axe like hovering just the a hair's length away from your your neck. And when you get here, I know you'll come from my chair too. And as he pushes through to cut the neck and decapitate you, you snap awake back under that tree. He's gonna just... Oh, fuck. <laughs> a lot of time for the music, man. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I had, like, oh, goosebumps shit. for a lot of that. <laughs> that was... That's... I need... That's, like, a three-minute, three four-minute, like, animation that I need in my life is just Tacitus falling asleep, fighting himself, realizing he's fighting Bog True. Flipping to his purpose and then Bog True yelling at him, then prove it. It's like, um, Ollivander, uh, Derek, and Dalton, I mean, uh, Third Rock, you all felt a very oppressive divine force for a moment and it freaked you out. Uh, Tacitus, yeah. uh, flash of a moment, you feel that presence, you don't know what happened. Tacitus begins bleeding heavily out of his neck. Oh, oh shit. Yeah, I'm gonna go right at him and try and cure that shit. shit. I would, Lay on third, some rock, hands. Third, third Rock would like to if politely kind of just sit up right next to you and kind of push you back and give you a nod. Um, I, third Rock would like to use uh, fourth level, because we're kind of long resting right now. Uh, well, I'm gonna the three of you come to Tacitus' body as he kind of <gasps> snaps awake. Tacitus, you, you feel the same lethal neck wound that your younger self had dealt to you. You kind of look down, you've lost a lot of blood. All right. <laughs> Healing magic won't fix this. As your friends kind of come to the conclusion, too, they fumble. You have this conscious moment as all your friends are standing over you bleeding. You know you're essentially dead. Can I death ward him? You look at your friends. They're about to be standing over your dead body, and you spent your whole life telling them to never bring you back. You think 
of the challenge issued to you by Bog True. You think of submitting to your younger self to die here now, and as you begin to die, what do you do? He's gonna just kind of like try to like feebly like reach out to Third Rock just for a second. Mm-hmm. And he's just. I'd like to perform. You cannot cast any spells on him right now. It's the let me talk button. I know. So, whether it be through Third Rock, just uh, Third Rock's going to try. And we'll get to what you guys try. Tacitus. Bef- in, so, in, in this moment, you're going to die. Do you accept yeah. that or do you call for help? Do you want this to be the end? After right here, right been, now? To a right fucking here, right dream, yeah. to a dream state version of me? I feel like I won that fight, personally. <laughs> <laughs> and then issued a challenge by Bog True, which you cannot Bog complete True. right now if you die. Yeah, which is a problem. Because I did just tell him I would do it for me. So, yeah, he's kind of, like, reaching out for aid. Do you say anything? I, I was I was trying to... I was pretty excited to tell Third Rock that I made a god bleed in my dream. <laughs> you, can get a, you can get, like, half a second here if you want to, yeah? Yeah. Then I'm just gonna... I'm gonna look at him and be like, They bleed. They bleed. <laughs> Third and he's Rock's just going to reach out to him. And in and, and a way that you guys have never seen such, like, blasphemy upon gods where Third Rock would normally be, like, a, a anti-devil's advocate, Third Rock smiles really, like, menacingly, definitely more chaotic than good, and is just looks at him, and he's just going to raise his hand that's just glowing, like this arcane, like, dark arcane mixture of just light orbs traveling through like pulse purple black darkness and I'm gonna look at him and I, regardless of whether I know it works or not Terry this is what he would do and then I'm gonna try one other thing um, Third Rock's gonna cast Death Ward and I'm gonna hover the hand above him and I'm gonna go if this is your will you touch me and then I'm gonna cast it assuming that he's going to um uh, whether or not that works post that fact third rock is going to also use uh, a fourth level cure wounds same thing I'm going to hold out my hands and say I'm going to need you to really hold on for this one and he's going to cast a cure wounds and then I'm going to if you'll let me make a medicine check because if if <clears throat> if Tacitus if Tacitus looked at me and said they bleed the gods bleed then I'm gonna look at him and say like like it's just with that knowledge I'll, I will let him die here but he has to reach out and touch me for every single one of these encounters oh Tacitus is gonna look over he's gonna like just kind of he took it on the left side, so he's kind of just dangling on from a bit here. <laughs> but, like, he's going to just kind of, like, reach over with whatever nerves he's got left. He's going to gently touch your hands, and then he's just going to straight up die. <laughs> well, then he just stops moving. I'd like to add a hero die to the 27. I got two, and they don't last longer than a session. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what the medicine check's going to do. Tell him, tell me that he's gone, I guess. Fuck. I don't know, man. I'm trying I to mean, save my buddy. <laughs> you're looking at the it, seed, and all of you have seen, like, blows that kill, and he's received a very, should be instantly dead blow. Whatever divine presence just came in here seems to be holding him in a state of just the passing of life and death. And Tacitus, you kind of hit that point where you know you're about to... Whatever is keeping you right now is going to stop. You could probably get four or five more words out. And five just, more words? Just to, clar- yeah, just to clarify, this is essentially deciding now if you want to call for help to come back after this, or if you want to call it quits here. Is Derek there? You see Derek and Ollie are definitely, like, standing right over your body. <laughs> like, fucking freak it out. <laughs> then as Tastus loses his last little semblance of thought, there's going to be a really uncomfortable stillness for about a second and a half. 
and then he's just gonna shoot right the fuck up with his <laughs> just for RP sake his relentless endurance and he's gonna grab Derek by the fucking like <laughs> neck and he's gonna fire <laughs> my and he's gonna be, die. <laughs> I don't dead. know why you grab Derek Third Rock's the one with the diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> Wait. I, I didn't I didn't hear what you said you, blue. He said bring me back. Bring you me back? Yeah. Bring okay. Bring me back Yeah. You guys watch as whatever presence was keeping that state there vanishes at this point. You don't feel that divine oppression anymore. But you look down and you see that, yeah, Tacitus has sustained a massive cleave in his neck. I'm, and he is sitting I'm gonna look dead. at. I'm going to look at Derek and be like, I, I know Tacitus has always been the one to be kind of confused, but do you even have the spell slots? And I'm going to hold out the diamond to him, like the... The, the last of our diamonds that can cast Revivify. Oh, well, I mean, not the last, but the last $300 one. We have a $500 one, but I don't want to use that one. Um, His evil murder god is here. Please, let's... We I, have a limited time. I, I, I do, and I'm going to go for the ritual of uh, casting uh, Revivify. Tacitus asked him, asked Derek to revive him. Third Rock passes the diamond to Derek. I just give him a good, thoughtful nod, thank you, and I get to work. All right. You place the diamond down, you begin to cast the spell. Uh, Tacitus, you're kind of, like, just drifting in this empty expanse for a moment. And then you kind of, oh. you hear your friend's voices begin to echo very, very distantly off. You see, like, uh, you're in a dark void, so it's hard to say that a face would look shadowed. <laughs> But it does. You see the shadowed face of, like, Bogtree begins to form in the the shadows. <laughs> I knew you would not disappoint me. But don't worry. This will be the only time. You see uh, threads of magic dig deep into your being. Uh, press and tear at whatever form you have in this... And as the magic kind of pulls you forward, you feel... Terry, uh, you're cutting out, bud. It's kind of big, sorry. For everybody? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what's the last thing you guys heard? It's just intermittent. He, he pulled something. into Tacitus. Yeah, it's like pulling your form apart in this whatever existence this is. And as you begin awesome. to, like, float back towards the sound of your friends, just uh, that magic begins to... Uh, just re wreathe in an agony under the pain of it. Uh, and Derek, as you cast the spell, you feel it complete. The diamond sits wholly intact on top of his body. Wait. It did not consume the diamond. Can Third Rock make like a religion or arcana check? Because that's. Oh, Terry. That, that's insane. That's oh, not, Terry. That's not As good. Tacitus' eyes. <laughs> open up no third rock third rock looks at the situation and immediately is frightened and is like look can i can i, can I, can I <laughs> wait can I, what can i can i check it derek do you know what you Tacitus just did is alive with is that a plus <clears throat> why is this bad Jay? it's can it's first... it's not it's kind of it's kind of bad Stay in, the moment, what... guys. Stay in the moment. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I am in the moment, Lane. Third Rock would like to check this before he wrecks it. And I, it well, I mean, you guys are all looking up. at Tacitus is alive now. Tacitus, what do you do? Third Rock's the only one who knows the, what do I do? the consumption of the diamond. I'd go for a drink. I do. <laughs> uh, you, you feel a diamond. painfully sober. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ugh, and you kind of look down. Ugh. For a moment, you feel tired, but it's a different kind of tired. You just feel, like, physically tired. Your body is exhausted. It's getting to nighttime. But you take a deep breath, and you fill your lungs with air for the first time. And what feels like a long time, you look around, and you see all the faces of your friends, and there's a different type of tired you hope you don't feel again. You're okay with this one. All right. He is okay with this. Everyone's freaking the fuck out. <laughs> Rodney, right he's just like, 
Man, you guys uh, ever have one of those dreams where you feel like you're falling? <laughs> <laughs> that shit is why. <laughs> and that's when he just... <laughs> Can I... Mm. Good morning, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Can I can welcome I like, back? Can I like detect magic on him or try and like yeah, analyze? Cast detect like magic. His... Everything, everything that he had it's... that was magical is still magical. Nothing weird on him. It's uh, it's certainly fun to stay up late, Tacitus. But good morning to you. What time is it? I don't fucking know. What day is this? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, well, welcome back. Essentially, uh, I assume you run them through. We, we, we just did that whole scene, so yeah. you run them through. You're like, yeah, like you were put to sleep. Bog True approached you. You were fighting your younger self. You died. Uh, then you were challenged by Bog True to take out Imerith, and then you were brought back to life. Can Third Rock <laughs> wand Can Third Rock wander off and ritually cast Commune? Yeah, yeah. You guys just see Third Rock gets up and walks away. Okay. This is, gonna um, be easy, this is gonna be an easy three questions, Terry. Well, I'm I'm staying right by Tacitus right now, and I'm just going to like clasp his hand really hard and say, "That cunt in the sky can say whatever he wants, but I'm very glad that you chose to stick around for you, <laughs> and only for you." I uh, look at Tacitus, look at the fire, and I give him a wink. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's just gonna not, he's just gonna openly just like, just, just, he's, he is out of it, bro. Like, he is like, uh, it's hard to describe, but like, right when you wake up in the morning and your eyes are just kind of like, sharp <laughs> everything's yeah. super bright and he's just like uh <laughs> but at the same time like yeah no he's that was uh that was pretty fucking intense i'll look at derek to sit right by him and i'm just gonna pull out my herbalism kit set it up on the fire and i'll just say oh yeah i can't do anything for the Godly exhaustion you're feeling, but I can make something to warm your belly that won't cloud your mind. <laughs> just a uh, nice little herbal remedy. And I'll just get to work on a nice little warm drink. Third Rock, you make your way out away from the party and begin to cast Commune. Okay. Can we spooky chat three questions? Because I got, like, three pretty good rapid fire ones okay. laying on my pops uh number one can i ask if tacitus's soul has re-entered his body to this yes. is all the box tacitus's soul has re-entered his body yes okay. does tacitus owe you a debt no Is the diamond not being consumed a gift from you? Yes. Okay. That's that's all I need to know. That and the, that's gonna put Third Rock at rest. He's gonna singing the little elven ballad, like an elven story of family and ancestry, and you know. All of a sudden, he just feels that oppressive orcish force, and he's just like, "Oh no!" <laughs> oh, no yeah, that, that shit was great. It was it was a very good scene. I I really, but god damn it, everything you could have said, I was not expecting because you bleed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that whole scene. I I guarantee you that was like, if if we ever. If we, if there's ever like someone we know to animate something, can we please save this VOD so that we have the reference point to cut that little bit of video and send it to him? Because I need to see that in my lifetime. That would be so cool. 
like seeing old Tacitus fight young Tacitus like you're pathetic and old Tacitus eventually like tackles him to the ground and just like pins him and then Bog True comes out yeah the fucking oh shivers so good so this is talking hands type shit but so good <laughs> uh but you guys do see a third rock returns a little bit more passe and calm he's just and when he re reaches back to camp and then extends a, a hard forearm to Tacitus and goes to give him a shake and then just looks at him with kind of a a, a, a con concerned but more of like concerned for your well-being and like smiles at you and just go good to know they bleed and it's good to know that your bleeding didn't end you and then just kind of like not go pull in for a hug but just like kind of pull him in close and like chest bump him and just be like I think I think this was a blessing from something that you would also agree is a blessing. And I think we should move on. And then just like, if I can kind of slide you a piece of jerky or some meat and then just, cause I, I know Tassus, anyone dies, they're hungry. I've died recently. You get hungry, you get super hungry. So I'm going to pass him some food for some quick snacks and then kind of just like nod and smile and kind of, walk off and maybe get back to bed depending on what time it is. I don't know if it's morning or night. We never really established that. William, what time is it? <laughs> William's asleep. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wake him up to ask what time it is. <laughs> oh, <what the> <laughs> <fuck>? <laughs> William, uh, William, like, looking We're around deep and party as it is. Fuck, fuck you, and I throw the fucking clock at him and I go back to bed. Wait, the, yeah. one the, yeah, the clock that he got from Loudwater. Oh, whether it hits whether it hits me or I catch it, I'm just gonna kinda pick it up and what Terry, what time is it? Oh it's it's late at night. Okay, cool. If it's still nighttime, I'm sleeping. I'm gonna just kind of mosey on back to bed. Oscar drags the clock back to William. <laughs> Tacitus is going to slowly eat his jerky and to himself he's going to look at you with a face of content and while he's eating his jerky he's going to think yeah that was definitely a blessing of some kind <laughs> and just really be grateful that like it's still dark <laughs> we can get drunk again <laughs> Just a, just a little, just a little though. Tears in the moonlight. Just a little. Not overdo it. <laughs> He's not crying. He's happy. He had a good conversation with his god today. Conversation? I mean, I guess it is the god of. Listen, you talk to your god, Hal. Openly challenge conversation. <laughs> Be a man. <laughs> there you go. Firmly grasp it. <laughs> Your God's neck. Firmly grasp it. Oh, that was so fulfilling for me. I'm to make personally him a kid. pen pal with my God, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Somebody killed my God, but then they came back, and we're not on talking terms anymore. <laughs> Go ahead and take a little 10 minute break or so here. And then we'll pick up. Are we going to Bryn Shander or Frost Giants first and then Bryn Shander? To my knowledge, at the zip was put off last. We were heading to Bryn Shander to try to get a lay of the land before we went off. But Honestly, I wouldn't be opposed to just going to Svardborg because this is pretty primal. There's not like, it's not like information. Just the ice giants we've already got kind of most of the information like they just want eternal frost and if it's the same kind of command that we've seen is is replicated by the fire giants and the stone giants it's mostly just smash and grab there's been a pretty common theme that there's been higher orientation but there's not a whole lot that small folk know about it if if that's that's my opinion. If we still want to feel it out, I would, I'm 100% down with that. But I got a feeling that feeling it out is going to be a whole lot of like talking to people and being like, oh, you know, we're talking to small folk about frost giant matters. <laughs> yeah, we might learn where they've been raiding, but like we've we've got an idea of 
like some of the port towns that they've taken over, but I don't really think. Like if we go to Bryn Shander, it would really be for Third Rock to check in with a piece of his family. And I feel like if you're okay to check in after, then I'm okay with that too. Check Third in after is, you know they're safe. Third Rock seems excited, but not eager uh, to return to Bryn Shander. We also know that the Sardborg poses a threat to Bryn Shander as well, so you could always do like this take care of a possible threat and then go say hi. <laughs> or I can I can message to see where she's at too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, just, I just realized. I will say canonically the reason why uh, Astro and William were waking up is because William fucked up the catnap spell and just fucking knocked each other out. <laughs> <laughs> Like, he's just try, just... trying to learn a spell and he just says, you cast yeah, it, you cast you, you mixed up like the second and third part of the spell to where now instead of like a 10 minute hour rest it's you <laughs> took it you took an eight hour short rest <laughs> and then this one goes ah, here oh no Ash, get away <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we are taking a break though yeah we're gonna yep. take a break so it's uh oh five come back like the 15 minute mark See boys in the Taking the, the, the gummy so flimstone. <laughs> we'll get some water. I ate seven of them. You can't oh, put me to sleep. <laughs> but no, seriously.
for you then. So are we going to the frost giants? <clears throat> Sorry, I cast. Yeah, space. we so we have we have a point like we could go straight to Svardborg, or we could try and dig in Brinchander. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm kind of more partial to heading straight to it because this is I don't. You guys highlighted it. This is not gonna be a diplomatic thing and going around and asking. I think we're gonna be able to find just about what we found now, plus the actual setting that is Brinchander that third rock might be able to add to it but i'm not opposed to going straight to svardborg but i and then doubling back on brinchander but yeah i i totally recognized the parallel between tacitus uh and what he was going through now and a little bit of what derek went through so i just wanted to have a heart to heart in whatever conversation um came of that it just came to me in the moment and came to you in the moment and i was I was really grateful to the, what we ended up having together at that campfire. So, how'd you like the fucking grabbing you by the neck and telling you to bring him, bring the guy? You bring him I was home. ready to get to fucking work, is what I was ready to do. <laughs> I was like, your Dalton. command is my. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't want to be like rules lawyer and technical about it, but I was like, I did only give him one diamond. <laughs> Here's another. <laughs> Take it. The diamond didn't get used. The diamond did not get used. Interesting. Tacitus is old. He was passing stones. They used those instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's so gross. It's gross to think that Tacitus' kidney stones would be worth 300. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he drinks yeah, so much that his kidneys got good at like his, his is liver that, got really is good that a, filtering liquor. His kidney had so much pressure that it basically fucking like cold into turned pearls. Turned him into pearls. <laughs> <laughs> There's an audible clang when he punches it. Is that is that a kidney pearl you got there? Oh, oh wow, my over here. He's the golden goose of kidney stones. All right, <laughs> I'll fetch a nice price. <laughs> We got a new job for you, kid. Sorry. <laughs> Keep pissing. <laughs> we wake up the next day. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, good. Everybody can take a just... long rest, obviously. Yeah, yo. Yeah. Oh, sick. Need to adjust my motherfucking spells. <laughs> all right so you guys make your way to a clearing where the airship is currently parked and waiting you see delsaphine and the crew uh are kind of like eagerly waiting at the side as well and you see uh two of the members are currently like uh repairing some of the the railing on deck looks like something had uh broken part of the ship wait what yeah. happened? something happened delsaphine kind of looks up well, luckily no one was hurt, but something ran into us last night while we were flying. Fuck. Something big enough to do damage, I see. Any idea what it was? Well, we have it, we just don't know how it ended up hurtling through the sky that late at night. You have it? You have the creature? It's not a creature. Something. Well, what would that be? Was it a rock? Brostic, get the axe. Oh, I was about to say, if it's an axe, I'm going to shit myself. Who threw oh, the Diet Slayer axe? <laughs> oh, no, it was Bog True. Brostic oh. kind of comes up from under deck, and he's got, like, a wrapped-up axe that they're just, like, keeping safe. <laughs> oh, about, about the size of a great axe. What? No. Oh, oh. What well, is it? I don't believe in f most fairy tales, but do you mind if we take a look at that? I guess, as long as it doesn't go flying again. Uh, you see, they've uh, they've wrapped it in chains and they've chained the the axe to uh, Brosik. <laughs> if nice. it flies, I'll fly with it, so I know where it goes. <laughs> just, just like dragons, buddy, you fly just right. But now, give me the axe. <laughs> you can hold it, but we cannot unchain it. We don't no, understand it. Yeah, 
Okay, that go man on. is the fucking OG of commitment. <laughs> I'm gonna take it. William doesn't think it'll be there, but he is going to open it, see if he can find the word grim engraved. <laughs> Uh, you look down and you see the family crest of the Zymorvan Hall. You see Grim carved into the side. It is the same giant slaying axe that you lost in Yartar. Oh no! Oh, <laughs> Give me that back! <laughs> Wait a minute! <laughs> Astro. Astro. Oh, that, that's not Astral. Hi, <laughs> Mrs. Astral. He said, he said he'll be back in a second. <laughs> oh, never mind. Um, I, I do believe that this is... This is yours, I suppose. Don't... Ro Rossi, how do you... Do you have the key to the chains? What the fuck? <laughs> I lost the key. You lost the key. Okay, so how are we going to... I don't often blunder, but once I do, it's usually... <laughs> I don't have that spell today, man. <laughs> well, we can break the chains in the fire. I can take what? it. He just walks over and like puts his hands and the axe into the fire <laughs> elemental <laughs> pit. <laughs> uh, I'll use the controlled fire that I have for my armor to keep it from burning process. Yeah. <laughs> he also has a fire immunity or resistance. He's a fucking dragon cultist. <laughs> no, he wants to be burned alive. Why would he get resistance to it? Because they, were, they already told us that they have it. <laughs> oh, yeah. you, you help him from burning himself. The the chain links grow re glow red hot at one point. The magic on the axe keeps it from burning. Uh, and at that point, you guys were able to tink, uh, break one of the chain links and everything unravels. I want that axe. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, axe. Tenderly <laughs> hands it to you. You are strong enough. If it flies, you will fly with it. I trust you. <laughs> That's fair. Thank you. And he's going to take the hot axe. And just... Yeah, you, you hold the axe. It's definitely hot to the touch. And as soon as you grab it, like 10 feet to the left of the balloon, a lightning strike cracks and hits the ground. He's just going to look over. He's going to nod at the lightning strike. He, and just like, just right off in the distance, he's looking at the axe and just, just, out of focus just and he knows the axe he knows begins uh, to shift form a little that's my natural one for looking for cold rug <laughs> <laughs> the axe begins to what to transform a little instead okay. of the zymorvan family crest and insignias it is replaced with a much more traditional like wood splitting mall uh handle and shaft uh, the blade turns a hint of blue in, uh, decoratively on the back side of the axe. You see now dragon scales made of blue dragon scales kind of jut off of it. At the bottom, there is a... Uh, the pommel is an old bear that has been impaled through the chest and is dead. Fuck. <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> now it no longer one. looks like the axe that was taken from you. <laughs> That's fair. Still keeps uh, tap he still keeps the grim like, carved into the the side of the axe. That's all I ask. <laughs> I would have carved it back in again. <laughs> <laughs> Third Rock would uh, like to ritually cast communicate. <laughs> no, no, I'm, just I'm just kidding. <laughs> hey yo, you do this shit. <laughs> All right. Well then, as long as the axe won't attack our ship again, we're ready to take flight. Sounds like Where to next then? Let me zoom in on my map. I know the name. Oh wait, it's not on the normal map. <laughs> Shit. On my back, we pull out the map. Oh, okay. Um, what are we gonna do? What were you saying, Jen? Um, His mic was underwater. Seeing Tacitus' axe start to transform and knowing who it's, and I'm unaware of you know, the sort of dynamic that happened between Derek and Tacitus, but I get the feeling that something's changed. So I just want to have a very brief check in 
um, where I'll look at him and I'll say, How, uh, okay, um, yeah. No, that's it. Okay. They're switching sides. <laughs> I'll say. <clears throat> what that so, man Huh? So what that man eating? <laughs> <laughs> I. How do you feel about receiving this gift? I've been. Reward for my son. You know, an old friend once told me that suffering gives us nothing, <laughs> but our living through it and the future we create from it gives us everything. I would like to reward you, not for your suffering, but for being here amongst us. And I will take out a, uh, a vial of silver, and I will say, I don't know what arrangements have been made with that lightning bolt striking the side of our ship with that axe being brought back into your hands. But I can tell you this. If you wish your dedication to lie in your brothers in arms and not that which caused you suffering, I can, I can do a little something to help that journey be on its way. And uh, I'm referring to the ceremony spell of dedication. And it is typically reserved for dedicating someone to the service of a god uh, or a faith. And the faith that I draw upon is the lot of you. And it is our dedication, our mission, our bond together. And I will... Um, draw some of the silver in uh, like a battle markings on my face and I will offer to do the same onto Tacitus's and dedicate him to the brotherhood of Dave Matthews hand and have that be a tenant of his faith Tacitus is going to grab your hand for a second, like just your arm, and not like aggressively, but just gently, like as you're applying. And he's gonna say, make sure to put a broken pelvis at the top. Of course. <laughs> and I will, I will swipe a, sign of a, a, uh, can you guys hear me? Sort of yeah. Half, yeah, welcome back. Go ahead. I will, Swipe a half circle uh, with one hand in the silver, and then with my other hand bare, uh, draw a line empty uh, diagonally through it. And as the ceremony completes, the silver ignites and etches into battle markings on your face that will fade gently in about 24 hours. But um, yeah, I will go back to my underwater computer for some reason and tell you what that all does. For sure. Damn man licking the icing off the stirrer. <laughs> God, I oh, wish yeah. that was me. <laughs> you licking this or or what? <laughs> Literally cannot hear you. Yeah, this 
You switch the default again? I don't have my microphone with me, but... Go cool. I got cookie dough trinity, I feel ya. <laughs> Yo, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yep. Alright, cool. Louder I'm on my phone. Before. Just so y'all know. I think I had to turn you up from your last setting, though, so that might be why you sound so loud. Nope. No, not better. Worse? Worse, yeah. That wouldn't be a good Um, you would want that much lower, like all the way to the left. Can you talk now? Hello. A little bit better. Let me just turn you up on Discord, that might help too. Oh, it says you're muted on Discord, my friend. Oh, <laughs> that'll do it. Oh, were you just. Oh, fuck. We okay. just heard you on <laughs> Trinity's mic the whole time. <laughs> hey, guys, how's it going? Howdy. How's your mic? <laughs> how's my mic? Good. Okay, I'm gonna turn my settings back down so I don't pick up Trinity the whole time. Damn, bro, you fast, Terry. I'm quick with it. I got a lot going yeah. on. You see my DM screen. <laughs> <laughs> I will spend that time uh, on the airship, dedicating Pasadis and his mission forward to the lot of us and our brotherhood. Which function were you giving him? Dedication. Uh, whenever you make a saving throw, you can add a d4 to the roll for the next 24 hours. Just so we're clear, it is still the Giant Slayer Great Axe, right? Yeah. Okay. Just looks a little bit more unique. A little bit more blue. It would make sense With that a big dead bear. dragon slayer weapon would look a little bit dragony. It's <laughs> a giant. They it's fucking giant. hate each other. I know, but he did say it has scales on it now. It certainly yeah. does. He saw That's yourself killing uh, Imareth in the vision with it, so. Yes, he did. Right on her neck. Big chop. Okay. I appreciate the rating of oppression. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> All right, well, as we get closer to the iceberg then, um, do you wish to <laughs> land next, directly next to it? Do you, this is a ship after all, we can land in the water a ways out and sail up to the iceberg. Do the ship has sails. I do believe I have been informed that Ice giants have a tendency for piracy. Are we sure that's a good idea? <coughs> well, we could also try to fly up to their base and they'll throw rocks at our balloon. Yeah, there's really no good option. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's go to jail, <laughs> boys. It's been a while. <laughs> All right. You guys make your way up. to uh, Svardborg. It's the way. Assuming everyone's in agreement with uh, hitting Bryn Shander on the way back, yeah. Yeah. Perfect, give me one second. <coughs> Jesus. Alright, about a day and a half's travel on the airship. I'll say you did a ceremony, the ceremony spell towards the end of the half of the next day, so he'll have uh, the full 24 hours, essentially. I got a half, cool. I already do know that for my spells as well. Okay. Um, you guys begin to make your way north. As you fly, the clouds begin to hang lower as they are weighted down by the snowfall. You see off in the distance gray skies as far as the eye can see. 
even colder above them, so unfortunately you have to deal with the snow below them. As you travel over the Arctic wasteland that is Icewind Dale, uh, at one point as you kind of cross closer to the border between Icewind Dale and uh, the Sword Coast, uh, you can see the outlines of Luskin far in the distance. It's talling, uh, st- tall standing towers of the the five ship captains where they live. Uh, you do see like smoke kind of rises in the distance. Not that it's decimated, but it's rebuilding. Things have progressively become more apparent to the North Folk. The giants are an issue. Making your way over the frozen tundra. Uh, not much attempts to come anywhere near the airship and the warmth it puts off in the sky. Most things that live here are comfortable in the cold. So I did not roll that the I did not roll well enough for the dragon to try to attack you in the sky again. So you, luckily you guys saw her last time you guys came to Icewind Dale. <laughs> good old Icy Claws. Okay, you guys have an uneventful, uh, good weather ride to the Sea of the Moving Ice. <clears throat> and what you the- see when you get there... Let me go ahead and put myself on here first. I'm really uh, upset that you can't upcast Shield of Faith to get multiple people. It's pretty OP. Pretty, pretty busted. <laughs> well, well, no, because hear me out. You could abide by the same mechanics that Spiritual Weapon does, where it levels up every second level, and that maybe the second person only receives a AC buff of plus one instead of plus two. Like I bet you there's. There's a there's a non broken way to home mechanic that because it's genuinely a good spell and if you have a lot of squishy people who you're not trying to just like min max uh, uh, the frontliners and tanks it could like genuinely benefit at an upcast for like a lot of casters and shit. The good thing three of us can cast it. I guess that's true. Too. But on that though, why can't I upcast haste? God damn. <laughs> huh? So <Soapy>. peeved. <laughs> All right, haste uh, is a uh, third level spell Mac. though. I was joking, though. It's okay. This is a first level spell that ends at first level, but it's still really good. Well, you gotta use your first level spells for something. This is true. Alright, you see but the massive glacier of Sardborg and the move, the sea of moving ice. Anywhere you can see uh, far in between. And luckily, you guys have the, the cultister expert sailors, and William's there to help, too, as you uh, dip the airship okay. down into the water and begin to sail the frigid seas. Well, this is a lot farther north than you usually sailed your vessels, and luckily it's a smaller, <laughs> more dynamic ship because it has an air elemental powering it, so it works out pretty good. As <laughs> <laughs> water is just fucking getting <laughs> shot up on board. How do we stop that? <laughs> well, don't worry about it. You guys see a... Well, let's see. Let's get the... The Loki lures. Let's get uh, Ollie, Astro, and William to make some perception checks for me. Okay. It's a new dawn. It's a new day. Can't wait to use those rolls on me. My allies might appreciate a, <laughs> a six or a three. 63. It's I doubt one, it. One partner's really not if invested. Someone gets pos- if someone gets possessed. Hi. <laughs> right, um... And then Astral, you there? Yeah, what's up? Roll a perception. Oh shit! I don't have. I'm on my wife's laptop. I don't have uh, Beyond Twenty installed. Okay. I rolled like dog shit. It's okay. Uh, Ollie, you see. At one point, like, you guys got a, a chance to kind of, like, fly by close enough to kind of see without being spotted, hopefully. Um, there's a couple places you could take the ship to board and attempt to infiltrate this place. You see, it's like a massive... It almost looks like a massive part of a town, like a, a northern giant settlement, like, super old, lived here long ago. And as the sea, uh, this place broke apart, it kind of drifted out, and this is what's left of it. Uh, you see a couple spots on the iceberg. You could either... If, if you're sailing, you could sail alongside most places. Uh, if you wanted to kind of fly and land, there's uh, about three or four spots you could theoretically do it. Five if you're a badass. 
<laughs> you just want to dive right into the what middle of the the glacier because it kind of opens up to the sea in the middle. <laughs> Damn. I mean, uh, this badass option. <laughs> they have. They're used to people, or themselves docking in, through the sea. I feel like it would be less expected for us to come in through a more aerial place. If there's places for it, yeah. I suggest the badass route. I, I think that's the one we should take. I do not suggest the badass route. This is our one way out, and if we slam it into the side of the ice... <laughs> so, if you want to check the quick, to... Jay? Sure. You see the map, uh, you kind of get like an overhead view because you guys have the option of flying. Uh, possible spots to land the airship are marked with stars on the map, pretty much the bottom left. Uh, that top right, you could uh, sail and dock up there too if you wanted to. Top right, you said we could sail and dock up too? Yeah. So, like the top right building that's kind of partially covered in ice and snow? Yeah. You could try that one as well to land in front of it. But aside from so, that, those three stars are like the easiest places to land the ship. And then you could always just land the ship in that middle section of water if you wanted to. Seems like a great way to get attacked on all sides. Um, <laughs> Don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's like something a loser would say. So you're all looking at this too, right? Yeah. Nope. Wait. Uh, Messenger. Oh. Cool. Oh my gosh, yeah, the middle really is the badass area. <laughs> yeah, it's it's fucking right in Shit's Creek, no paddle type. He said, territory. don't get me. Eh, don't get me. <laughs> what are you doing in the swamp? What are you doing in the swamp? <laughs> I love it. Unfortunately, I don't think that's a good option. <laughs> Because that would be... It's a fun option. It would be fun. Yeah. But I don't think it's a good one. <laughs> so, do we want to take the top right? Um, I feel like that'd be a good place to hold, maybe. It looks like they come in through that where that chain is. It's like a chain gate that keeps ships from entering. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't look like it's possible to come in from the north. So if you wanted to dock on the north, it'd be harder for them to get to you with those ships. Yeah. I kind of like that. Me too. Give us a head start if we're running away. And then do you want True. the airship to stay in the water or land uh, for the hopes of flying away? If the airship stays in the water, would we have to climb up the iceberg to get to it? Um, you'd have... Well, assuming that that building goes into the inside, you'd have to come back through this building or go around the sides. We should probably send it away. We did the same thing with the stone giants. Hmm. Yeah, they could always just drop you off if you wanna. If you have other means of getting out of here. We would need a quick exit if things, you know, weren't looking great. But I suppose the like we're not really unless all of us are gonna die. We're not really pulling out of this without a conch, right? Oh, no, not yeah. yet. No, we have to go to here. We're all in agreement that... We're in this right now. Well, you can, if we're, that being if we're said, in... we cannot repair conches. They are irreparable, so we need to make it out with a an entire conch, a whole conch. Yeah. Undamaged, so... If we're um, needing to get out fast, I'm officially capable of casting the teleportation circle spell, but that is a ten-minute casting time, so... I well, feel we, a, we could feel finish a, battle. That's a good. That's a good exit strategy. If we finish battle and hold guard for ten minutes, it would be rough. It'd be very rough, but it's a good immediate exit strategy. <clears throat> Perhaps we land, send it off, have it not stray far, but. You know, leave the area so as not to get attacked. Yeah, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Keep it up in the air. And also, uh, 
while we're within like approaching distance, because I feel like this is the time when I should do this, uh, I would like to ritually cast Water Walk on all of us. So yeah. that means water and snow we can uh, bypass. <clears throat> And if we get thrown off the iceberg, <laughs> we will take falling damage into the ice. I think you can choose. I mean, if the target, see, if you target a, oh, if you target a creature submerged in liquid, yeah. But no, it's still a good play. It's a very good play. Um, Tacitus, real quick. You have access to the Giant Slayer macro I made for roll 20, right? Where you can just click the button to roll the damage. No, I have that. Yeah, the third rock has that on me. <laughs> Unfortunately, right. it's been mocking me. <laughs> um, the Grim, you have it now. Goodbye, Derek. Hi, goodbye, Dalton. Uh, if you want to go to the top Ooh, right gone. on roll 20, the little, like, three list, uh, like, three bullet points and lines. Let me know when you click on that. I'm there. There should be two options under macros. I see him. Uh, click both of those to be in your bar. So click the little checkbox. And then just hit add or... They're they're there now. Yeah. So if they say they're in your bar, they should be below our names on the bottom left. They they I see them. You, you want me to roll those one? To, yeah, they both work. You're fine. But you can just click those to roll those automatically. And then the other one. It's it's been there for so long that my screen looks naked now. I kind of want it back, not for use, just to. I didn't hear anything said. Did you roll the second one? Uh, no, do you want me to? Just to make sure it works, yeah. Alright. Sweet, that works. It works. You can right-click them to change their color. Um, yeah, so you guys were... One more time on what the last thing was said, you guys wanted to, to go to the north side, right? In the north side, and then we were going to send the cultist off flying in the air away so that they don't have to worry about getting hit by rocks, but within reach. So don't abandon you here, but go fly somewhere else. Yes, pretty much. So we, we can potentially rely on them for an escape. Uh, Rosic, if you're ballsy enough, fly into that center section, lower down. <laughs> Shoot yourself off the ballista with a chain, grab us, and escape. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's the plan. Sounds like a lot of damage. Uh, yeah, it should be all good. I'm getting the tokens kind of situated. I'll put you guys in the map. Whose mic is watching the news? Huey in the news. You like jazz? Huey, Dewey, and Louie. DuckTales! Woohoo! <laughs> we have a Twitch affiliate in the audience. We can't afford to say that shit anymore. Yakko, Wacko, and Dot. <laughs> Stop it. claims can only be claimed off of songs if you use a certain amount of the content. Uh, before going in, William will cast not only Major Iron Rod himself like he normally does, but he'll also do it on Oscar. Oh, there we are. Big Ice Glacier. Hello, Big Ice Glacier. The driver has stopped responding. You're on a laptop now, right? Yeah. Welcome to hell. <laughs> Top does pretty good. I don't use it for gaming, though. Okay, perfect. Those are the same size. All right. We landed in the north, right? Mm -hmm. oh, I see our tokens now. We landed in the east. Northeast. The wind has carried a great deal of snow. 
um, uh, all around recently. So even the this uh, I lost my train of thought entirely there. I'm gonna restart. Even the snow has snow. Even the snow has snow. That's how cold it is. Snow for days, yo. Everybody, <laughs> roll a con save because I forgot about them. <laughs> Ollie, you're good. You said con save. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming you're all next to Derek, so you can add the plus four. Yeah. Powered and energy. Goddamn, East Road only gives me fire resistance. <laughs> Ooh, I'm using my rangeriness to help you guys on your footing and stuff, and just like. Oh, we can all walk careful. on snow. I, yeah, but you know. Oh, I guess there is like a, a climbing, a fifty-foot climb. <laughs> I guess that'd be fun. Yeah, everybody's climbing fine. Speed is so or William nice. said you were lucky, down, right? Baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, come down. William, you said you used lucky. Okay. Yeah, I drink it all. So okay. technically, uh, dirty twenty. Cool, cool. Yeah, you guys are all cold, but you're not exhausted. Uh, you approach this massive lodge. Uh, the yeah. Third one right. you could tell at a glance is what is uh, left of an ancient temple of Therm, the uh, god of the frost giants. Uh, you could tell it's being like uh, rebuilt. It's being dug out. The frost giants are trying to like bring this place back. Uh, you see like signs of woodworking you see some stuff's been like re-put up other stuff is just uh they needed to get in there so they've been digging at the ice is there seem to be like paths um paths like what <clears throat> like eh. i guess more of, of like lines up the cliff is there anywhere that I, that we can tell? And this is less of like third rock thinking and more of like group thinking. Is there anywhere that we can like scale easily, like relatively easily? And, well, I said you guys landed there? the ship next to it and then got out on the iceberg. Yeah. Let me just step Was down. Was that what I you guys to... did? Yeah. 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 You guys are already on the icebergs. So you're fine. Cool. Oh, the iceberg is fifty feet up. I thought I thought to like to move forward, to like, sorry, I thought to move forward to like this area. No, so the iceberg on top of everything is fifty feet up. So you could walk like oh. on all this. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. <clears throat> I thought it was we were about to have fucking problems. No, cool. That's wild. This is um, this is the place. The entrance to this building is in front of you. Uh, giant sized door. <laughs> that, I was Absolutely. just thinking that lane. Lane, I was just thinking that. I was like, well, I feel like us walking through the giant sized doors might be a bad idea. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You guys, uh, what are you guys doing? You're just sitting there looking at it? Can we go it's around? A closed door, right? I'll, I'll go open the door, fucking yeah. door. <laughs> okay. uh, so the doors are 25 feet tall. Uh, there is a handle about 11 feet up above you. I'm just going to try and shove it. Does it look like it's got a clicky mechanism on it? <laughs> uh, you, you'd have to turn the handle and push the door to open it. Son of a yeah, bitch. can't open That's it Dark Souls style. That is <laughs> typically how doors work. Yo. You want to kick down a 20-foot tall stone door or ice door? <laughs> I'll just straight up knock. William starts pulling out a rope. <laughs> is going to yeah, attempt, that's, uh, that was my idea. I was thinking using well, mage me, hand. Go I'm going to bring that up and wrap it around the handle and then <laughs> hand that to Tacitus. Oh, I was just going to put Tacitus on my shoulders. <laughs> that is, you're going to he's going to lose all of his fucking leverage. <laughs> I'll try and huck it up, I guess. You throw but the like rope up. The, yeah, yeah the, I, I use mage hand to tie the rope on, and then I hand him the other. <laughs> oh, then I'll, I'll tug it down. How do you turn a handle with a rope? It's like a... You just pull it. Yeah, it's a. It's not a doorknob. Oh, 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 lever. Oh, for sure, lever. <laughs> the clicky. I, I was thinking knob. I was like... <laughs> it's funny. That's right. Yeah. Even frost giants have to deal with child safety locks. <laughs> it's a pinch. Don't fucking talk down to me. Their children are six feet tall. It's going... <laughs> 
That's a funny image. Mm. I'll okay, take anyways. <laughs> Give it a second while it loads. <laughs> Entering into the massive temple, you see, like, uh, where snow has been tracked in as people have, like, been coming in and out of here. Just massive footprints to and from. Uh, just huge clumps of snow that would stick to a giant's foot. Uh, the wind has carried a great deal of snow into this r open room, set into the back of which is in the alcove that holds a 25-foot-tall statue of Therm carved from glacial ice. The image looks like a powerfully built male frost giant with clenched fists timber from broken rafters and our smashed doors lie strewn across the floor. So you see the door to the left has been smashed. Being in the sacred place, and William just being curious, he does look down at his boots and wants to see if the East Rune is doing anything. Doesn't seem to react, no. Cool. Oh, fuck me. Alright. This place seems to be in ruins. Let's, uh... Go about it slowly, and... William will take the lead, keeping an eye out for giant-sized traps. <laughs> William's taking what you will about the giants, but they aren't quite... Okay, so orderly. Is right behind. Absolutely, yeah. Order. <laughs> Please. William Tacitus, I, anybody else? Probably, doing marching order? A good giant I can't even see the map right now. I'll I'll follow up behind William. I'm having a good time. I'm having a good Can time. Can you pull it up on Terry's stream? Like on your phone? <laughs> I'll be lagging behind you guys. Third Rock mm -hmm. would like to sit um, side by side with Tacitus wherever Tacitus feels he, he should be. I'm not behind William. William wants to take point. I'm interested to see how this goes. <laughs> if the mage is gonna, like in there. Yeah, I want to be in the back, just like making sure I'm looking over everybody as a caboose. I'll just, I'll just say I'm in the middle. You've got to find caboose to have. A hey. Derek. <laughs> All right. Eh. Yeah. Ahead of you, you, you see... I bet you Derek has the nicest ass out ...wooden of pillars that rise down. to meet the rafters about 30 feet overhead, uh, with the pitched roof rising higher, forming an 80-foot-tall bell tower with rafters of its own. Uh, dangling from these rafters is an enormous iron bell, we uh, iron bell weighing... I mean, I guess you can just tell by looking at it. That's about a 50-ton bell. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good time I if I ever I did see one. one. I read in library. The rim's book. about 20 feet in diameter. <laughs> I don't see Are the there bell. gargoyles up there? Can, can anyone else see the bell? We're behind a pillar, so that's why we can't see it. Oh. That just has the axe drawn. Uh, you have a hallway has... off to your left as well. You could check out if you want to, or you could enter like the main room. Thank you. Uh, William, seeing, uh, this star here, is that another statue, or is that the bell? Uh, That's you can check out the left. Cool. So looking into uh, the left room, uh, da -da 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 uh, ice has broken through the walls and ceilings of this hall, and a 12-foot wide, 15-foot high gash from the outer wall leads to the outside. Uh, set in the alcoves along the corridor are four stone statues that most likely once depicted frost giant Jarls. Uh, you see all the statues have had their heads broken off. Uh, and uh, two patches of ice have kind of grown from the open door in front of these two statues. Uh heads broken off. Do I see the heads anywhere? You do not. Do you know? I will, water. I'll quickly send Oscar up to maybe examine to see if it looks like they didn't, were broken off or perhaps, you know, whether it was an erosion or a snap. See if this is more of a defacing or a 
like Oscar to the statue. Yeah. Oscar like walks up and goes, "Damn, someone well, broke I the statue." <laughs> this is you are the Oscar's smartest cool as owl as well. in the Feywild, too. Uh, Damn right, yeah. Put some respect in there. Go look through that fucking wall and see if there's any fucking frost giants. <laughs> like fly outside. Yeah, um, fly outside. Cold as fuck out here. Fuck yeah, you're an owl. You got like feathers and shit. It's still cold. We still get cold. Just roll a perception check. <laughs> Ain't nothing to see out here. <laughs> <laughs> you changed. <laughs> you sent me away for too long, man. Hanging out with new people. William's gonna head up to go and check out. I read a book little, called like, Familiar Rights. We should talk later. <laughs> we know. Oh, I know. Remember how he died my... last plane? <laughs> he died eating your cooking. Good news. I can learn the modified memory spell now. <laughs> yeah, that's chapter yeah, four of like the of Familiar oh, Owner. <laughs> Low key as a wizard, I feel control. like that's in like that's in like wizard laws to get your shit banned. Like you can't alter the memory of your familiar. That's like manipulating the will of others. Who's shit. gonna catch a wizard? <laughs> All right. Wizards. What are you what, what are you guys doing next? I'm uh, gonna go ahead and head up a little bit more north, being careful with the ice. Oh, third rock would, me third rock would like to examine. Can can I do? Um, History or investigation on uh, the statues. What pace are you guys kind of heading at right now? Uh, William would be leading at a slow pace. Group can grease. I would also agree. Slow pace. Yeah, everyone go yeah. Yeah. Check I, I figure I've got slots to spend. Um, I will. Uh, pass that trace lasts for an hour, so I'm gonna up oh. that as we're walking around. Oh, it's so good to have somebody have that spell. Stealthy. Now that I don't have disadvantage on self checks, things are going good. <laughs> Sean, yeah, Mr. 30 on self check. One second, I'm Jeez. rolling. Sorry for that, by the way, people <clears> in this room. I'm going to ask, sorry for what? And I'm going to say, just give it a second. That's mm. disgusting, Sean. Astral's invisible? Well, <laughs> I've been everyone. offended by Coco's Coco water. I feel like placebo, I can smell it from here. Yeah, yeah, you probably can. <laughs> roll, roll perception, Sean. Uh, perception. Mm -hmm. uh, 1d20 plus 8. <laughs> Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll take that into account. <laughs> Fucking. Is the dragon here? God damn it, Terry. Uh, far up ahead, you guys see, like, these uh, statues that have had their heads knocked off. Uh, there's, like, a massive puddle of water in the back. Uh, do you guys have to see, like, the rafters have kind of, like, received some damage in here? So it's not entirely stable, but you reckon your oh. weight's not going to mess with anything. Do I canonically mm -hmm. see what's going on over here since I can see it? That's so what do you guys do. <laughs> Can I, th as as we're slowly making our way, Third Rock would like to investigate the statues, even if just it's a few of them. I don't want to get like all of them. Just whatever is in our path of travel, I'd like to look at them specifically and see if there's any differences or see if there's like different any... statues, different yards. <laughs> just the heads got knocked off. He's gone now. <laughs> Terry knew you were coming, so he preemptively took care of the statues for you. <laughs> uh, that's quite considerate. Cool. Uh, keep going forward. Eyes focused on either the big puddle or whatever this is. I do have a fixation on statues. I don't know why. <laughs> I'll ponder the third rock. You, you rep that statue, eight bud. <laughs> you rep it with pride. <laughs> third rock, do you think... These yes. giants did this to their own temple, or do you think something did this to it? I think between the ordning breaking and this being a 
uh, clearly revitalized temple. Maybe, maybe a little bit of both. Maybe this is a, a temple of frost giants that might have believed something else. I'm unsure myself, but it seems with the ordning breaking, frost giants may not agree on what was founded here in the first place. Uh, that being said, we're not here to discuss that this is more of uh, an interest, but I do think if these frost giants that are here do not hold the same faith, that that answers a bit more of a question as far as the activity of each giant kind and their eternal frost is built upon their pillage and ceasing something. We just need to figure out what and I bet you if we stop this I'm sorry what was the title of this one because I know it's not Yarl it's is it Yarl of their leaders yes yeah okay so if we stop this Yarl Bro, that Vikings. may that may significantly halt this eternal frost that we've been warned about As beside the conch I fear that is our main goal here because the conches are group dynamic. That's that's what we need out of this. But I think something we could all also gain for it is a little bit more knowledge. Sure. Well, let's stay on the alert. Um, at this point, you guys are kind of coming further into like the the temple, and at that point, Ollie and William, you guys kind of see and like stop the group and like hug the wall you're on. Uh, up ahead, you do see what looks to be, like, two frost giants kind of standing guard uh, at, at another door to get into this complex. They don't seem to have spotted you yet, but you know that if you kind of get any closer to them, you'll risk getting spotted. Ambush. We've never, as Dave Matthews hand, if we did, it was in Lost Minds. We should ambush. I'd be down for that. Ambush, them. good to me. And if we do ambush, right before we start the ambush, I would like to cast, and this is very fucking dead word heavy, but I, I want to see it, and this is going to make for such good conversation. Tacitus, your new axe now has holy weapon on it. That yeah. damage that damage is, is not applicable. I just wanted it for the spell slot. So Third Rock's going to look at Tacitus, and with very few words nod at him and give him the same kind of shake and just say, good to have you back. Now I want to see you through for your purpose. And he's gonna touch, basically touch like the new parts of your axe, kind of like like feeling if it has a texture and just going, looks nice. I think I like it more now. And uh, he's going to now, whenever you make an attack, Tacitus, you have an extra 2d8. <laughs> I mean, every we time? We Every would be time. moving into a, a an ambushable position before we charge. It, it, lasts, it lasts. It lasts up to an hour if I can hold okay. concentration. Yeah, um, but it, that that was that was, was not so a good did... place where we're at on the map to advance initiative. No, I'm I'm not worried about that. I, I, I wanted to get it out of the way so that I still had an ambush round and I could cast that. So. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> That's a disgusting ability. Well, you cast it, and, and then the weapon just yeah. oh, puts off at 80 <laughs> feet of holy light. <laughs> and the giants turn around and go, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Initiative. <laughs> Guess we're going. <sighs> I forgot oh, about that's that. Fucking... <laughs> because you're going to what you want. That's going to be a conversation later. <laughs> It's your first time casting the spell, now you know. <laughs> that was, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, yeah. As long as Ollie doesn't lose his concentration, you guys could try to ambush something else later. You still have Pass Without a Trace going. Okay. All right, uh, Astro, yeah. that's you, man. I should have thought about that more and talked about it. That's a, we got a long trek ahead of us, don't we? I could, have held, I could have held that for the last thing that I did on the surprise round, and we could have oh, still got my Astro, you're round. first. Good. <laughs> Kind of <laughs> motherfucker. Terry, was the bell still functional? Huh? You didn't get a good angle to see the bell, so you don't know. <laughs> bitch, bitch. Right, so I'm gonna to bring up. that bell. 
Mm. I'm going to take the dash action and put kind of position myself like right here behind the pillar, trying to trying to like keep myself out of sight of the giants. You can move up to a hundred feet, right? Yeah. And the display drivers just crashed. Fuck. You love to say ring that bell and every frost giant in this goddamn facility is coming towards our location. That's what I think. All right, that's cool. I can see level two. Oh, you can see like the other maps. Yeah, no. yeah. I literally just it. saw a fucking room. <laughs> Don't worry about God it. mode. All right, Derek, that's you. Oh, great. Now and I see nothing. Dust. Oh. Tacitus, the you're on deck. Of worlds. I don't know what happened, but it scrolled I down. Don't see any giants. On the map. We pointed them out to you, though. They're right over here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. Hey, okay, so I'm gonna cast shield of faith on um, third rock because I don't want him to get hit. Okay. Because obviously I don't want him to keep him having concentration on that. I appreciate um, that so much. Yeah. Yo, what the fuck is going on? The fuck is going on? And then I'm gonna move. Uh, yeah, dash sixty. Dash sixty, yeah. Close to Astro, like I guess. Been a long strider, but he's the last one to go. Shit. 60 puts you right there. Tacitus, that's you. Full sprint. Dash Great action Georgia. puts you 80 feet. Yeah. Doosh, 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 just running. You raging? Um. You go another 20 if you rage. Alright, yeah, I'll rage. Rages and then pushes another 20 feet closer. All right. Well, two options here. They just kind of, huh? Like with a bright light. And then this dude just comes rawr, running at him with a fucking glowing axe. Are you doing uh, radiant damage or uh, necrotic damage uh, with that one? Uh, third rock? Radiant. Oh. What was your intent when you cast the spell for radiant damage or necrotic damage? Dalton. There is no dog, only dog. Sorry, only I was sorry. I was rocking a piss. Um, it only gives you the option for radiant. It doesn't give you an option for necrotic. Oh, I see. That's yeah, not like spirit radiance. It's a holy, holy weapon. Weapons attack deal an extra two d eight on a each. Um... It becomes, as a bonus action on your turn, you can dismiss the spell and cause the weapon to emit an explosion for the four. Okay, I got you. So it's just 2D yeah. on his weapon attacks. Cool, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, the Frost Giants have two options here, and Nashville's harder to hit right now, so you want to catch a rock, uh, Tacitus? Always. <laughs> how does a... How does a... What's the range here? 95? <laughs> How's a 17 sound to you? I think I'm at an 18. Do you have which axe? Do you, which axe do you have out? I've got the giant slayer. Yeah, so no shield. Oh nope, no shield. So that hits. You take uh 26, yes. so 13 damage. As you're smacked with a rock, bounces off. You just kind of a familiar Bludgeoning. feeling at this point. <laughs> yeah. Ouch. This guy looks like he gets a little bit better of a shot on Astral, so he'll take it. You got at least half cover here as he throws a rock at you. Uh, it hits. <laughs> it's not a crit, but it hits. I'm going to deflect missile. Okay, go ahead and uh, roll for that to see how much damage you take off of it. Hold on. I need to look at the actual fucking feature. I don't remember what it is. I think it's a D10. Plus, like, your Dax and your Monk level or something. Yeah, something like that. 
It should be on your This turn. is so awkward not effect. having rolled, rolled, rolled fucking beyond 20. I know, you get used to it. I love it. <laughs> fucking spoiled. Everything Where the hell is it at? It'll be under features and traits. Okay. Uh, deflect missile, it's a D10 plus 12. Okay. So I'll just, to for speed's sake. So 15. Alright, so you reduce it by 15 damage. Uh, as the rock sails, it was 23 damage, so you manage to lessen the impact. Minus 15. You take uh, 8 damage from a giant rock. <laughs> Essentially, like, you stub one of your fingers when you catch the rock and put it to the side. <laughs> Ow, fucker. As, like, the rock comes over, though, you, like, you look up, you, like, push the rock, and then you look up towards the sky, and you can see now kind of, like, unfurling from the bell, white wings. <laughs> oh, get the fuck out of here. William, that's you. What? Dragon up there? <laughs> Oh, cool, yeah, William's gonna move his, uh, full... 30. And suddenly, go blind. Oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> and then from there, you check your range. Out of range. Uh, kitchen. There oh. it is. <laughs> cool. Good news is, you gave me a hey, target. You got a uh, Are you going to shoot yeah. at the dragon? <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be very afraid and going to readjust my movement. <laughs> uh, hmm. <laughs> Not a dragon. Fuck it. Yeah, I mean, I gotta hit the... I got nothing else to do. Actually, oh, fuck. I'm gonna shoot a firebolt at it. <laughs> at the dragon or at the... Oh, I can't hit the out. giant. Yeah, yeah so go ahead and roll that. Got... <laughs> every shot you don't shoot, you miss. <laughs> This is a chromatic dragon, right, Terry? Yeah, white dragon. Okay. Assume that didn't hit. And yeah, that misses. These guys don't fuck around. <laughs> William shoots out. Fuck, fuck, fuck. No! Chromatic, does that mean... You? What does that mean? Eagle. Ah, uh, fuck. They colorful. With grossness. Dalton. Oh, uh, my turn? <laughs> yeah. Uh, sorry, I was being disrupted. Uh, I'm gonna use my bonus action, or I'm gonna use my action to do a dash, so I'm gonna go 30 in, for simplicity's sake, let's go 30 in this direction, and then I'm pretty much gonna be wanting to try and follow Tacitus, not like by his side, but pretty close. Want to make sure I can keep eyes on him. Okay. And then I should be able to cast spiritual weapon and move it to at least one of the frost giants. What's It's 60 feet, so I think I can reach him. Let's see. No, nope, definitely can't reach him. Can reach the chromatic dragon, though. Nah. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to cast spiritual weapon on the chromatic dragon and try and, like, keep my priorities, like, balanced. Yeah. Especially knowing white dragons and knowing, like, the pain experience with them. Like, what the fuck they can do to civilization, for sure. I guess I have to cast it. It's only going to be at second level. Spiritual weapon where? Uh, let's call it... I gotta hit, hit back on the ping option. Uh, right here. Damn, that thing's huge. 
<laughs> hey That's what she said. It's that time. Wait, what the fuck is this alarm for? Oh. <laughs> for a second I thought it was the, the Polish cow song and I was so down for it. <laughs> Alright, Dalton, move it where you want to put it. Thank you. Uh, the dragon's turn comes around and as uh, the dragon like unfurls does its wings and like... Does the 18 hit? Does the 18 hit what? The, the dragon. dragon. The dragon's 80 feet in the air. Before my turn? It's in the bell. <laughs> oh, it's inside the bell. Yeah. I thought it was just underneath it. No, it I didn't see out the, of the arrows. Bell. I didn't see the arrows above it until I thought my turn had passed. That's terrifying. Okay. Well, still not a bad. Okay, cool. So I didn't attack it, but. Uh, in Draconic, who speaks? I do. Yo. And William? I do. So nothing has hit it so far. Good to know. You see the head snaps to the left, to the right, like looks at the giants, looks at you. You won't have my horde if you've come to plunder. Uh, and she kind of like climbs out of the bell and onto the rafters. Uh, you see the, the frost giants kind of uh, look down uh, uh, at you guys, look up to the dragon. Help us smash them. Do not tell me what to do. Let's not forget the power dynamic here. I'll leave it to you. <laughs> They're arguing. <laughs> I'll, I'll look over at Third Rock and just say, I think we have our answer to the question. And I will bonus action activate my draconic presence, making my voice boom throughout this entire cathedral. And I will say in draconic, calling out, These are your natural enemy. Your inherent blood tells you you must strike them down. They seek to wipe you off the face of this earth. Defend your horde against this insurgent. Take what is yours. And I will uh, walk over um, 40 feet uh, and then dash another 40. Um, and hopefully this here uh, lad listens. Last. Last. Lad in the. Look at all these distinct feminine traits. Of course. You yeah. can see it in the. Yeah. You can see it in the jawline. It's a, it's it's really it's it's a man killer, form. literally. God damn it. And uh, I was horror. sort of. Just... <laughs> it, would fuck, it would fuck a donkey. She could call me donkey. Donkey. Uh, oh, make a and I'll check. work with this because you're going to jail. <laughs> With that draconic advantage. <laughs> 23. Uh, the dragon, like, kind of goes to see something. You see the mouth open, then kind of, like, ponders what you're saying for a moment. And you can see, like, there's something that the dragon kind of wants to say, but you feel like she can't. Astro. She's nervous. Interesting. Okay, so with Ooh. her being so <laughs> high up, um, <laughs> smells sweet. <laughs> Go, fuck him up. So yeah, I'm gonna step of the wind, right? <laughs> Bonus action down. Now hear me. You fly. Now hear me out. <laughs> uh, I want to fly up on this this giant's head. Easy enough. <laughs> dragon wings just, uh, abilities. green dragon wings just fly off the back, uh, out of the back as you begin to just, like, put off, like, your, your aura of, uh, poison gas again. Mm. I can't be healthy. <laughs> beat wings made of gas. You fly forward. So, I'm going to Draconic Strike, dealing poison damage. Okay. Um, oh, you can't quick roll these, huh? Nope. <laughs> did you not? Did you try not to? I mean, did you think about trying to install the extension? That works. Uh, twenty six hits. And then that's gonna be. You could also D6. just use the dice roller on D and D Beyond, and we can 
just see the dice. Oh, word? Mm -hmm. Shit, that's all you have to say. You can say this. Uh, did it roll? Make sure your oh. dice roller's turned on. So click on your name and then turn on the dice roller. Or did they move it? Uh, I see game log, but... Did they move the dice roll? Um... Uh, they moved a lot of stuff. One moment. I'll see if I can find it. I'm sorry, T. Oh yeah, click on click on your name, then click on character settings, and then you'll see the option for dice rolling. Okay. Yeah, right. Oh, I'm gonna check out. I'm gonna turn on the Rick and Morty content. <laughs> Are you gonna fucking roll it or no? There we go. Uh, max damage. Cool. Ten poison damage. Second attack. Um. Can I can I breath of the dragon for a second attack? Yeah, that's fine. Cool. Whatever. So you can breathe on both of them. Oh, he's forty feet yeah, away. Just... Yeah, he's 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 a decent he's a decent ways away. So I'm just gonna cone it. Okay, just hit this guy. So it's going to be throw, right? 16. That is a fail. Go ahead. Today, Junior. <laughs> yeah, damn. The dice was rolling. Max damage again. The D&D &D Beyond Roller likes you, Tommy. Derek, it's you. Tap it if you're on deck. More often. There's an option to where you can have... You to roll on here so you see the dice roll, and then it'll also take the roll to uh, roll 20. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna move 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Uh, I imagine I'm at least 120 feet away. Uh, I'm gonna. You just hear Ollie um, screaming in lizard talk to the big lizard wings. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, oh, okay, that's interesting. I'm going to focus on this uh, giant. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fight what I can. <laughs> I don't understand giant nor draconic, so I'm just going to point my... Just happy to be uh, here, guys. <laughs> yeah, big, long ogre sword. They would really be out the, here uh, fighting the Viet Cong. <laughs> I don't know who are you. I don't know your language. Right, you're doing uh, the cantrip? <laughs> yeah. Lay it on me. 27, definitely, yep. Ooh. Is that a 19? Yeah, almost a crit. Six damage, hits him. Tacitus, that's you. Frost Giant on deck. Um, I'm going to get as close as I can to the Frost Giant, and I don't think I can hit him this round, even if I dash, can I? If you dash, you can't hit him, but you can get that close, so. I can get what? I mean, you can get that close. If you throw something at him, you can maybe hit him, but you can't hit him with Sorry. your melee. I had to reset map. Um, I don't have, like, javelins slotted anymore. Fast. You tried so. throwing one of your short swords. Hey, yeah, I could. Yeah, I'll it's fucking... It's I'll an fucking improvised throw weapon. <laughs> so it's just a, uh, a d20 plus your strength modifier. So just roll a strength check for me. Just click on your strength score. Uh, 16... Does hit. So it's just a d4 damage, plus your strength. Oh yeah, d4 plus 5. <laughs> 9 damage. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Just fuck the short sword. <laughs> just takes it into his fucking <laughs> leg. You have an extra attack. Oh yeah. Oh, the other one. <laughs> Yeah, I'll throw the other short sword right now. Best twenty, best throw twenty darts. dollars we ever spent. Throw darts. That misses. Oh. <laughs> hero dies. Yeah, can I? Not, you know, I'm gonna save the hero die. I don't, don't want to get preemptive with it. I, I just wanted, wanted to preserve the rage, honestly. I wanted that Robin Hood shit where he gets a bullseye and then there's like another bullseye right next to it. <laughs> Wait. Ah. Just saw the Gekki Sanjay. Hmm. 
three. Can't see you. Oh. <laughs> Alright, let's go. One, two, three, four. Ollie. Uh oh. You got a decent amount of cover on this angle right here. Hit me with it. But are you gonna throw a rock regardless? Hit me with it. That's a twenty-six. Cover in my armor don't matter for a twenty-six. What's your armor? Twenty. Yeah, even with even with three quarters cover. Uh, that's nineteen damage. The rock shatters next to you. That a debris pelts the side. Uh, go ahead and make a con save. Good to go. <laughs> you always I'm do that. Assuming that I, uh, the... all all my talking and checking in wasn't enough for an inspiring speech. Mm, no, we'll get there when we get there. Might be a nice little pick me up later, you know. Uh, this sure. dude's gonna. Firstly, he's gonna try to get rid of the halfling on his head. So make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> Dexterity saving? Yeah. I can come over? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I installed fucking. Hell yeah. Come on. Yeah. Oh, you rolled like. You got like four cued. <laughs> None of them have calculated yet. I see 12 and 12. <laughs> and another That's 12 and 12. Everyone. So he rolled a 12. That's four fours? Yeah. Oh, they came that is now. four fours. That's statistically weird. Uh, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna eat you down to, to Tacitus. So you take... Let's see, he's like, 18. Wait a minute, That's something's wrong. Four? So far. Yeah. <laughs> Something ain't working there. Statistically possible. Definitely possible, not probable. That's that's a fucking Yahtzee. <laughs> oh, oh no, okay. God. Yeah, okay, there's obviously a problem. <laughs> that that's eight fours. <laughs> Alright, well I'll put you take my twenty six, I rolled for you, so instead he's gonna hit you with a great axe. He's Me? gonna swing a great axe at my at his face? Uh huh. Eighteen? Uh, With disadvantage? <laughs> yeah, meets and beats. Alright, you take uh, 35 slashing damage. <laughs> okay, I know Damn. what I'm doing next turn. <laughs> Raging. Well, he rolled really well. That was uh, close to max. 35 damage. slashing? Yeah. William, that's you. Holy fuck. Uh, that chunked William, me. He's been apparently some sort of conversations going on. Is going to. Look at the dragon, like, give it like a my bad gesture, universal, and is going to run forward a bit. Um, ooh, yeah, wow, everybody's able to move so quick. <laughs> and put myself here, see if I can get a fastball supreme firebolt over at this fella. Go ahead. I can't believe he swung an axe at his own face. <laughs> That's a natural one. Oh, yeah, fuck did he me. take any damage from that or no? Since it. I guess not. Roll, Natural roll again, one man. at this fella, huh? What's that? Roll, so roll, that, roll that attack again. Will do. Uh, I wonder hey, Sean. Gonna hit. You ready for this natural 20? <laughs> yeah, close enough. <laughs> close enough. Alright, uh, Sean, <laughs> you get hit with a firebolt for 14 damage. He can oh, deflect I... that, right, with his magical gauntlets? Doesn't he have the magic item to deflect range? I mean, I mean, attacks? if we're retconning that in, Terry hasn't officially given it to me yet. I gave it. To oh, you. I just thought. Oh, okay. Yeah, the dragon cultist gave it to you. Yeah, you could spend a key point to flip that back at the giant. Mm. Bitch. <laughs> Do you want to try to <laughs> catch the catch the firebolt? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right, That's the whole... That you know, this is the 12. exact reason why I fucking wanted to do this. 
D10 plus 12. Third rock you're on deck. Make get off of the ten damage. Kennel, bro. You, you still take four fire damage as you uh, manage to crush the fire bolt. What? Wait, that doesn't make any sense. He rolled a d6. He rolled a plus twelve four. again. Yeah, his thing's broken. Obviously, <laughs> yeah, that's that's not. In order to roll a twelve, he would have had to have rolled a zero. You know that. Right? Yeah, he just <laughs> rolled a d20 plus. Wait, yeah. That, that was a d20 plus 8 roll. That yeah, that's right. right there. He rolled a 0 according to... Yeah, okay, cool. 13 to... Uh, if I take the first 16. one. So 16. So yeah, you, you actually catch the fire bolt. <laughs> I, I just reset my... What the fuck was that noise? Bro, oh, Astral's Sorry. getting fucking hammered. I just reset my... Um, I refreshed my... Roll 20 and Dandy Beyond. What the fuck? All right, so you catch the Are you fire okay? Bolt. Do you want to use a key to throw it? You, you okay? okay? I heard some shit fall over. You good? Oh, I took the, the trash bag off the door. Okay. It was freaking me out. Child, thought you, like, died or something. Keep points as you want. I got you covered. All right, cool. So, yeah, I'm going to spend a key point to he throw it back to in his face. And somebody rolled it. during a short rest for that to work. For catnap won't work? Yeah. He has to actively meditate for half an hour during his hour of uh, short rest. Yeah, never mind. Save the key. <laughs> Do you want to throw it or you just want to deflect it? I want to throw it at the giant's face. Yeah, taking a key point, go ahead and make one of your unarmed strikes. Dude, I'm about to just roll Maybe this with 12. The That's fine. Dice. 15 plus 8. Plus, yeah, that'll hit, so it's just uh, your, I think it's your monk weapon die for fire damage, right? Yeah. Go ahead. So D6 plus uh, your dexterity of 3, right? 4. So, uh, so that's 8, eight damage. damage. Not bad. I, I meant to do that! Good catch! Third rock with you. <clears throat> Next time you should do it with the chromatic orb. See what happens. <laughs> that is, that, I don't know if you can die and deflect one of those. <laughs> Range on it. 30 feet. Okay. So I'm going to move. Hold on. Ooh, I need to be very close. Holy shit. Okay. Let's see if I can get behind Tacitus. Ah, uh, definitely not. That's fucking giant. This is a giant temple. Exactly. Jesus. <laughs> I, I know, Terry. <laughs> That's why I'm fighting for my life to keep that uh, pass without a trace going so we can actually ambush the next group we find. Let's move to, uh, Third Rock's to, to not break the, the timer. Uh, Third Rock's going to move 30. And okay. then, which is going to be, sorry, I'm using trap pad right there. And then I think that puts me within 30 of Tacitus. 45. Ah, 45. Son of a bitch. 30 of Ollie. Um, uh, and it's, and uh, Derek. It's, it's very Tacitus centric at this point, and once I cast it, you'll know why. Um, I'm going to use my action then to dash and get maybe a little bit closer. I don't want to put myself super at risk. This is this cover this this little bar right here, right here. No, that's just a piece of uh, wood on the ground. Okay, so if I use dash, I can get. 30 feet, like, behind this pillar. Yeah, that's fine. Cool. So I'd like to go 30 feet a little bit further behind the pillar, kind of eluding that. And then with my bonus action, um, can I move the, the spiritual weapon underneath the bell? Yeah, so it moves up underneath the bell at this point. Okay, cool. I'm gonna have to get my wife a new laptop. This shit's fucking terrible. The wings unfurl and <laughs> the temple almost shakes under the weight. It's now standing directly over you now, uh, Ollie. You see this massive adult white dragon, just absolutely. Ooh, enormous. fuck. Uh, you see, uh, she kind of like sizes you up and just like really makes sure to like make her 
her size and power known above you. Uh, mm-hmm. And then she just kind of like leads in like close. You see the massive teeth about the size of your uh, part, uh, better than a size larger than most of your face. And she just, what know you of our, le- I, I, I'll, I'll rephrase that, sorry. How do you speak our tongue? What know you of my situation? And then she's going to make a, uh, a bite attack against you. Against me or William? Against you. Oh, okay. Her token is just on William right now. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's uh that's me uh that's Terry uh, leaking into DM. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's gonna hit. It's a crit. Uh, so you take twenty six damage. Shit. R.I.P. that crit. Hey. I'm going. 26, you say? Yeah, so DC 13 con save. Mm-hmm. Reds, you say? <laughs> con save. Need an 11 or higher. No. You don't have that war cast. Hero die. You, you do have a hero die. It's guaranteed to get it. You want to burn it? Sasha's getting close to over. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. you can hold on That's that beginning one. to look exactly <laughs> like what the doctor ordered. Yeah, hold this for me. Yeah. Uh, she bites oh. on you. Uh, pushes you back and she almost like throws you up into the air as she like clamps on. Uh, as she's actually going to misplace you as she bites and throws you kind of, like, behind her towards William, and now, like, puts herself over you, kind of blocking from the giants. They have my eggs. Uh, Ollie, that's your turn. Um. I, uh, grimacing as so, the team William, just you just see the, the dragon bite Ollie's shoulder, flip him through the air, and slam him on the ground, and then whisper something in his ear in a language you don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll like look over to William and just say not the first time a dragon has handled me like this um, <laughs> what is your life man and, and like because you're a wizard you understand like how, how much his shit is together right now he didn't drop the spell he was concentrating on <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> I, I will like as I'm just bleeding profusely through some of the like the armor just dents into my so. chest. Um, I will, like, hold my hand up to the dragon's face and just say, There is but two of them in this room. Kill them, the rest will follow. We have the same enemies. They need not know that you worked for us if they die. And those teeth are better served in the flesh of your enemy. Wouldn't you agree? Make a persuasion check. <laughs> no quammies. Okay. Astral, that's you. All right, so Astral's gonna gonna fucking rage. <laughs> Against the <laughs> That's your bonus action? Yeah, I have no intent on dying here. You made me spit up a little bit of water. <laughs> yeah, Astral's gonna rage. <laughs> it was just so mad. So of kind back. of, uh, <laughs> I just mean, j- drawing, drawing the Reaper that he just bought. <laughs> gonna try to stab this giant in his eye. Go ahead. Dude, I'm faster at typing this shit. Fucking <laughs> so irritated. It rolled all twelves again, anyway, so don't worry about it. Oh my fucking god! Yeah, yeah that shit's <laughs> that shit's fucking broken. That's fucking hilarious. Survey says, Bing, twelve. <laughs> Twenty-three hits. <laughs> Can I have something to hit? Can I have something to hit? 
No. <laughs> Uh, that's plus two from the rage. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to Draconic Strike. Derek, you're on deck. Okay. That'll hit. <laughs> so that's a natty. Plus four. I'll just do plus six for the rage. Cool, cool. 13 damage on the crit. Good shit. Anything else? Um. How much movement do I have? Oh. No, I'd use my bonus action already. That'd be kind of stupid. I'll save that for next round. Derek, it's you. <clears throat> All right. I'm going to uh, pull out Talon and uh, sprint toward this giant. And as soon as I get 30 feet away from the giant, uh, I almost do like this, uh, you know, the, the way that like track runners like move their body forward as mm -hmm. they're crossing a finish line. Kind of like that. As soon as I like do that, I teleport right here using misty step and uh go in for some attacks against this frost giant two attacks go ahead what? 19 will hit second what? attack 13 will miss go and roll damage um, I'm gonna use a hero die since the session's almost over. Okay, yeah, go ahead and roll d6 on top. Yeah, that'll hit. Sweet. Full damage on both. 11 for the first. 11 for the second, yeah. A lot of 11s. Just <laughs> 22 damage. Starting to look kind of hurt. Tacitus, that's you. Blinding giant slaying weapon in your hand. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna roll up on. Can I? You think I could hit two, both of them in the same turn? Um, you'd have to move around a little bit, but you could. All right, I'm down to move around a little bit. So essentially, I'm going to swing on this dude recklessly first. Okay. That'll hit. <laughs> All right. Um, so I click this. Then I then click this. Click both of those things. And this. And then you add 2 D8. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, no, it actually rolled the it actually rolled the D6 for you on there. Cool. Oh, it does? Yeah, oh, it does! For Fury. Oh, yeah, that's lit. Yeah. So all I have to do is click that little... The 2d6. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. You guys watch as the... Uh, and then you roll the extra 2d8 on there. You guys watch as Tacitus rolls forward. The holy light kind of fills with uh, radiant energy from Third Rock. But then you also see, like, a necrotic cloud begins to almost form around Tacitus. It's like oh, that energy of necrotic energy also fills the axe as he slams it. You almost hear, like, rhythmic war drums of an orcish, uh, an orcish raiding party. Uh, that hits for total of 14 plus 8 plus 3 plus 2 plus 5. 32 damage. <laughs> In yes. one hit? Yes, Does he sir. fall? Um, strength saving throw. It's a DC 15, right? Uh, yes. He falls. Astro, you slow fall down. <laughs> I want to slow back. And then I kind of, I don't, I'm not wearing that, I'm not wearing that cape right now. Uh, and then I'm going to turn around and hit the other one. Go ahead, you move over, strength at that guy. Mm -hmm. Also recklessly, I don't remember if I have to. It has to be reckless, good thing you reckless. Uh, 21 hits, yeah. go ahead and roll damage. Plus the macro for Giant Slayer and then 2d8 for the, whack, the holy whack, weapons. Whack, 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 whack. Why is the barbarian making me do the most math? 
I'm sorry. <laughs> I suck at that. I got into damage. this because I thought I wouldn't have to do math. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, what you hit I? that guy for 34 damage, and he also falls down. <laughs> they just kind of like, as he picks himself back up from the ground, he goes... Beef Latin giant, and then he looks over and uh, screams at the at the dragon in, in common. Hurry up with that kill and help us! Uh, he's going to strike twice at you, Tacitus. I deserve that. Twenty-seven and a twenty-eight. That's both gonna hit, Terry. I rolled the same damage on both, so you're just gonna take it for one. How's that sound? Okay, damage. deal. Deal. Since that would be halved. <laughs> it's twenty-eight and twenty-eight, so both of those strike against you. Uh, this frost giant stands up from prone. <laughs> I'll be drinking with Therm. And he's gonna swing once at Astral and once at Derek. You should have always been. <clears throat> That's a natural 20 against Astral. And I was about to say, I think he should get disadvantage because I'm in between his legs. <laughs> well, he does have disadvantage have because of I'm, the. I'm, uh, too, I'm too far. The cloak was, of displacement, right? You're still wearing that? No, yes. Then it's not a crit, it's an 18. And by Still the hits, way, though. are you kidding me? Alright, so that uh, that meets... Uh, so you take 24, half to 12 damage, and then Derek... That's I can't 22. see my token right now. It's under the giant. <laughs> <laughs> Derek, a 22 to hit for 21 damage. Make a con save. Okay. <clears throat> you bet. One second. And then William, that's you. Uh, <laughs> kind of looking down at Ollie with the bite marks, and I'm like, "Do you have this? Should I do something?" Uh, I will say, um, assuming that because these giants are speaking to the dragon in common, I'll assume that uh, the dragon can understand. Giant, well, they spoke in giant uh, and in common. Okay, yeah, they cool. spoke in common to the dragon, so I'll say in common to you, William, I'll say I have every confidence that these these feeble foes will fall shortly. Just look at them. And surely she'll pick the winning side. Go on. Gives the looks at the dragon, gives an awkward thumbs up, <laughs> and he's gonna kind of uh, uh, sidestep it a little bit. I think I can technically, uh, even with difficult terrain, I can move here. <laughs> thumbs up to to uh, Dave Matthews' peace sign about halfway through, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and lob another firebolt. <laughs> okay. Kill that frost giant. Oh gonna be hilarious. Not the hit. That'll oh, hit. There we go. That, that fucking time. Fire <laughs> sets fire to the giant's beard. Uh, he's super mad now. Third rock gets you. Oh god, I'm just not doing that <laughs> great today. It's, it's, I want super mad to replace bloodied. He's not bloodied. He's just super mad. My That's beard. a long beard. So. <laughs> <Attitude>. <laughs> he, used, he used to have a mustache. Damn, All right, what do you do with their giant, thumb? show me what that beard do. Um, Dangle. I'm trying to figure out where's the best placement for me right now, real quick. Oh, that's the best placement. I'm sorry, Acidus. I'm gonna do it. That's not mine. That would that's be Astral's. Me. Astral? Sorry, bud. Sorry. Uh, what I don't do do? have to. Yeah, I feel like I don't know, man. The, the, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Uh, I'm going to. If this works with the first level, then it works with the first level. All right, as he's like standing up uh, and like goes to swing at Astral and Derek, uh, the swing comes down and hits the ground, and you rush forward. You grab a hold of the wrist and tear at the flesh, and a wave of necrotic energy ripples up the giant's arm as he falls over dead. 
Can I flavor it that instead of like ripping off his like ripping off his arm with like one half and then like trying to like pull him down to topple his body like away definitely from did not Ash. rip his arm off. Well, no, but like I I, I kind of want to like move momentum to like try and like throw the body like away from Astral. I know it's like a giant being, but still you can. Astral like... is slow falling still. <laughs> oh, he's in the he's, air. Yeah, he's fine. I, th I thought you said he was. I thought you said he was underneath the giant. His token, his token was underneath oh, the giant. Oh, Edgar style, yo. Oh, gotcha. Okay, that makes a lot more sense. Cool. Um, I was worried that... I was super worried that I was gonna, like, topple the giant on Astral, so I kind of wanted to, like, throw him out of the bald... Yeah, Astral's uh, quick enough to move out of the way anyway. Willy, 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 or willy, um... I still have a bonus action. Okay. Can I move Wait, my uh, spiritual weapon? 20 feet. 20 feet down? I didn't move it up the bell. I just moved it in the bell. I just want to move it out the of the bell. Dragon's now. on the ground now. So the yeah. So the the spirit weapon is on the dragon. No. The bell is eighty feet up. You got it to the bell. You can move it twenty feet around. So it'd be down to sixty feet in the air. Oh, I didn't know. I cast it all the way up to the bell. Okay. That's what Ethan um, wanted to do. <laughs> I, I didn't think I had the range for it on that spell, so I just wanted to get it as close to proximity. Regardless, I just like to move the, the okay. spirit weapon closer to me. Uh, you see, uh, William, can I get you to make a strength saving throw, please? Uh, no. I you like the Eddie Allen. make a strength saving. Oh, plus <laughs> one. I'm great at these. I'm the best at these! <laughs> <laughs> Is this is like, oh, the repulsion blip. Just sent me flying dog into a doing, Terry? A tail grabs you by the chest and pins you prone to the ground. Just You see <laughs> dirt and snow fly everywhere. As uh, the dragon like puts herself over you more, Ollie looks back, like sees that one of the giants have fallen. Just like roars to maybe keep appearances, maybe to genuinely intimidate. Uh, as you look over at William getting smacked around now too. There are more than them, and they chain my lover still. Prove to me you can free either, and I will help. Uh, William, you do take uh, the tail damage from that hit. Can we get that in chat real quick? <laughs> Which was uh, 12. Oh. Ollie, that's you. Okay, um... I will um, reply, I can hardly prove under your ma, but uh, my compatriots are making short work of these giants. We want them dead as much as you want your family back. Now, the next time you bite at me, you will see that that next giant will have fallen. Will that be proof enough? Make another persuasion check. Come on, baby. Everybody going into this, there's no place for democracy, Jaden. There's a little place for democracy. <laughs> enemy of my enemy. <laughs> 29? <laughs> 29 will fucking... Astral. Roll. You slow fall, you hit the ground. <laughs> Can't take it Sean, you Astral's gonna... Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Astral is going to... Rotate to right here. Gonna make a... This. Two attacks? Uh, yeah. Uh, so the 11 That's in... and, ooh, the nat 1. Uh, it's gonna make an opportunity attack again. Oh, wait, you're a halfling, you get to reroll that. Yes, he... Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, 25 does hit for 10 damage on the second hit, though. Um, I'm gonna spend a key point to make that a stunning blow. Okay. Um, that is a... I believe it's a con save. Yeah, I forgot these dudes are good at constitution. Alright. Uh, 
uh, you still have a bonus, bonus action. action flurry of blows. Quick, quick. Two more hits. Oh. Uh, the 20 hits, and a 21 also hits. So go ahead and roll another d6 for the crit. And then oh, I need the so plus. I need the plus right two. Now. All of those. I'll just add a uh, six damage to the end of everything. Um, so it was three hits. So ten, seventeen, uh, eighteen, nineteen plus six is twenty-five. No, by now. Anything else? Uh, yeah. I'll just end my turn here. Just beating on his leg. You're like jumping up. Crack high thigh just for insult. Derek, it's you. <laughs> Trying to give him a Derek, Charlie horse. Buddy. I just pictured that as straight Ty Lee. Mm -hmm. Like just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you right guys back. as flexible as me? I think you're as fast as her. Anime um... wise. <laughs> 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Hold on. You trying to flank? Yeah. If not, that's fine. You can flank him here. Okay. He's standing on top of me. Nineteen hits. Second attack. 19 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. Nice. He's at 69 HP right now, guys. <laughs> nice. Nice. Nine. I'm at 96. Mm. I'm Same. 30. <laughs> Look, uh, Terry, I get it. You want to express that I'm a small creature, but, like, everybody's been standing on top of me. <laughs> Here, I, 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 got a, I got a creative solution to this. <laughs> Tacitus, that's you. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna recklessly Petty. attack on him. <laughs> Go ahead and roll twice. That'll hit. That'll hit. Go ahead and roll the damage twice. And then go ahead and roll the, the macro for that twice. And then 4d8. You can do, uh, you can quick roll them with a the little dice roller in the, the top left. If you just go to the d8 and then scroll over to four of them. Ah. Makes my math a little easier if all the numbers are next to each other. A divine uh, energy! <laughs> and a little go. bit of necrotic energy in there, too. It's a fucking podgepodge, you know? Third Rock's about that shit. <laughs> plus two, plus six, plus 19. Oh my god! That's, uh, that's 70 damage. How do you want to do this? <laughs> oh my god. Go, baby! <laughs> um... He just. He hit him twice, eye, so. Yeah, that no, did hit him twice. Um. Oh Actually, you know, it's one of those moments again, if you let me. Uh, you, like, Go sink the it. axe into the lake, blood, like, spurts up onto you, and at that point, like, the blade as well begins to, like, pulsate. It's like he falls down. You see, like, for the third time in the blade's life, you see the axe begins to, like, grow for a moment as you decapitate in a clean swipe before the axe, like, reverts to its, uh, its normal self. Sassidus is going to pull back just even a little bit of maze and go, Holy fuck, that was a clean cut! <laughs> <laughs> he knows he had no power over it. <laughs> like a, sounded like a sham wow employee, uh, salesman. <laughs> now that's a lot of damage! To which at this point, I need everybody to roll a wisdom saving throw. Oh, that's fun. <clears throat> Finally, another saving throw that I'm good at. I am just excellent. Yes. Some magical effects. Um, I don't think so. It's the frightful presence. I don't think it says it's magical. Well, if it was magical, I would have passed. It's a it's a frightful present. I have advantage. Each creature of the dragon's choice <clears throat> must make a wisdom saving throw, become frightened, a creature... Yeah, it's not a magical condition, it's just a... it's a dragon. <laughs> oh, I have advantage against being charmed or frightened, though. hey -o! Hey -o! <laughs> I'm gonna roll... I don't care. I'm. I, it's still an 18, but I'm gonna roll the, the 2 for the hero's dice, because oh, I have you know one what? extra. Yeah. 
It's the end of the session. <clears throat> hey, Terry. Hey. Yeah. We all su we hey. succeeded. I would like to make this dragon roll to see if it gets charmed by me. And guess, uh, no, I wouldn't. I shouldn't. That's a wisdom save? Wisdom save, DC 17. That's a 22. Okay. Well, we both succeeded on our <laughs> checks then. <laughs> Alright, so Ollie succeeds, Astral succeeds, Third Rock succeeds. Uh, William, Glad I rolled that hero's die. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> William succeeds. Derek, you're immune to frighten, right? Immune? I don't think so. Is that a, is that, is that a higher level paladin or I'm thinking about? It must be, yeah. Okay. Uh, Tacitus, what did, did I you roll? Wisdom? Wisdom saving throw. Remember, mm. everybody near Derek gets plus four or three. Nobody's know. close enough to Derek. Four. Uh, I guess uh, uh, Tacitus is close enough. I failed. And Derek's standing right on top of me, apparently. What did it roll? Oh, a six? Yeah, that's... that's six. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... Uh, <laughs> Just Tacitus is scared. <laughs> you kind of look. You kind of look over and like it's less that you're scared, but like you more like respected as a killer, and you're more more happy about what just happened to your axe. You're just not gonna fuck with the dragon right now. Yeah. No. I I I, I figured they had it handled. I don't know why. I was. And it's, just it's, it's like I, I feel like just like the time you spent in the wilderness. Like you're totally cool with the fact that you have a flight and a fight mode. So like. You probably lean pretty heavy. They're like, oh, body's telling me I'm in danger right now. Better listen. <laughs> I mean, you made the whole temple rumble, so yeah. yeah. You're We're gonna not wait frightening, to but you are basking. <laughs> she kind of leans in real close to you at that point, then, Ollivander. So you're a prophet, then. Let's talk. And that's where we're going to end the session. Mm. Holy shit. Knife. Fireball at fifth Thank y'all for watching. I'm ending the stream here. Have good.